Well, hello guys. Welcome to another week, another weekend of the uh, the Ron Henry uh, live stream, Long Cure live stream. It's an awesome show we got planned for you guys tonight. Uh, we have Lee from Real Rollers. Uh, you know, it's it's it was a took a lot of work to put this all together, but I'm really really excited to have Lee on as our guest. If you guys are not familiar with Real Rollers, they are the guys that are the exclusive uh, dealers for Swordman and um, True Cut in the U.S. as well as makers of uh, Real Mower. So again, as always, guys, tonight. The, the, the show is always about you guys. Any questions you guys have, um, we're gonna definitely take those. But uh, if you can keep the questions more towards real mowers, um, that would be better, but it doesn't, you know, whatever the questions you have, whatever goals or issues you have in your spring lawn, we're gonna be more than happy to, to, to work on that. So let me bring Lee in here and uh, see what we got. Hey Lee, how's it going? Good, how are you guys doing? Good, 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 good. All right guys, so let's look at some of the people we have here in the comments. We got Super TA in the comments. Uh, Josh Habib, uh, he's, he's throwing out like a, his, his basic question here, like, well, you know, what is what is a real mower? We got Kent Carson, Papa Mo's Low, um, yeah, some, some other some other great questions that we'll, we'll, we'll get to here as we uh, as we we scroll down. Very cool. So, so Lee, so real rollers, what's new with you guys for 2021? I mean, it's been an interesting year last year, and I know this year you guys got a lot planned. What like what do you guys uh, got going on this year? No, yeah. Um, first, thank you for having me. Pretty excited about tonight. A little bit nervous. I'm always an open book, um, but you know, looking forward to chatting with you guys and trying to answer as many questions as we can. Uh, but for real rollers this year, you know, one of the big things we're working on is uh, expanding our turf park. It's kind of a new creation that uh, I've always wanted to do. And basically, last fall, we took about a half an acre of our property here and created three different turf plots. You could call it. Uh, El Toro Zoysia, we have a, a Zeon Zoysia, and then we also have a Tiff Tough Bermuda. And I've always had this dream of experimenting with these different grasses, with different mowers, because it's just something you don't do at home. So my big goal for this year, aside from, you know, talking to folks and mowing, obviously, is to try some different things on that turf park. I think it'd be pretty exciting to cut it in half and do one treatment to one side or mow it one way and then do the exact same type of turf with the same sun, soil, and everything, and do something different. Cool. It's just something you don't do at home. So I can't wait to get out there. Yeah, yeah, it should be fun. You figure with with a uh, with three plots of grass all made the same way, and you know, yeah, two types of zoysia, one type of Bermuda. It's going to be cool to place, play around, do some experiments with. So, so it's a very, very, very cool. Um, let's see our first question we got here. So, um, Josh, I I'm going to assume it's your question about what is a real mower. You know what a real mower is. I think you just got one. So we will we will bypass that one, but if you really want to know, ask again and we'll come back to it. But our first question on real mowers comes from Daryl Tunstall. He says, what's up guys? My question is on the 20 inch true cut real mower. How often do the chains need replacing and when do you know it's time for a new real blade? Thanks. Uh, what, what are your thoughts on that one, Lee? That's a great question. Um, you know, from my perspective, I had a true cut 27 that I was running for about seven or eight years in my house. And I uh, still have one, but I don't use it as much. As far as the chains go, you know, I don't know a prescribed rotation, like uh -huh. let's say a belt, you know, with a belt, you look for it to fray or to crack. With chains, generally my rule was as long as it was working and it wasn't breaking, uh, it's still good to go. Um, if you have some slippage, that would obviously be a sprocket consideration, or maybe right. a link needing to be taken out. Um, but as far as the reel itself, um, you'll notice on the reels, Obviously the blades are welded onto some, let's call them vertical discs. And uh, the rule of thumb there is you get to a point when you've grinded it so many times, whether it's a, usually it's a relief on a true cut, um, to the point where there's no meat left, you call it, where when okay. you're going to grind, you're about to hit the vertical support that's welded on there about five or six times across it. Mm -hmm. You generally will need to replace it once uh, you get to that point where you can't grind it anymore. Really right. There's no more meat left. And or if you have a significant bend or a chunk missing out of it and you're not getting a clean cut, it's probably a time when you may have to replace it. But they're expensive. It's not something you want to do. I got you. So, so definitely not like an every year type of thing. It's really only no. as needed. No, sure. that's, that's definitely usually five years, five to seven years. It's kind yeah. of what we hear, but it depends on how much you mow and your type of grass, I think. Gotcha. Very, very cool. Great, great question, Darnell. So a uh, super TA chimes and he says, and if weather plays nice, uh, he's meeting up on Sunday to get the Liberty 43 with Scarifier. He's excited. Congrats, nice. man. Yeah, that's a, that's a, that's a nice mower. Nice, nice bit of kit. 
Very, 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 very nice. Uh, let's see. Uh, so a question here from or a point here from Kevin D. Jones is, hey, Lee, hope you recovered well. I had been talking to Eric and Curious. Um, what is available off your last shipment or I may wait on an Electra for August? Not sure if you want to chime in. Uh, what or... is your weight off your last shipment? Are we talking about the Edwin? I'm sorry. So my, so the Edwins, um, right now, looking to my side here, looks like March 5th um, is the next arrival of a container that doesn't isn't sold out. Okay. You know, one of the challenges we've had, great challenge, but it's definitely been a challenge, uh, was COVID last spring. It shut down many of the manufacturers for two to three months going into the prime season. And uh, we spent a lot of time last year just trying to play catch up. Usually over the winter, things slow down. But I believe some folks that were waiting last year um, kind of kicked and punted and went ahead and ordered this winter to get ahead of it. Mm -hmm. So we truly have not caught up out of our back order. And we're about six to eight weeks. So I like to tell people it's kind of like getting a Tesla. Um, pick your color and, you know, plan six to eight weeks out. Um, Swerman's tripled the production facility. But as you can imagine, uh, that takes time to load up and ramp up some new workers and all those machines. So we're hoping by around April or May, uh, they'll be at full capacity for the U.S. And we'll be able to get a little bit closer. But I also think the seasonal ramp up production is or demand as well. So Very we're going to cool. do our best. We're trying. It's an everyday process to try to make sure we set the right expectation and communicate because people want to know when they're going to get it. They got a plan. Very cool. Yep. And great as question. As far as great the point. Electra. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think it's going to be a, probably a topic for today, but, um, you know, the reality with the lecture is the U.S., and I'm very candid about everything, uh, you know, the U.S. has different grass types, um, much larger yards, tougher grass to cut, mm -hmm. and we have much, two more things, hotter temperatures, um, which obviously with electronics uh, and the motor running can tend to overheat them faster. Sure. And then we have bigger yards, and they're, uh, sorry, not bigger yards, a longer season. So with the Electra specifically, it was working fantastic and is working for a lot of people. Um, but certain folks in South Texas, um, some parts of Florida that have big properties that are running their mowers at, you know, midday, it's 110 degrees out and the sun's beating on the hood of that Electra. We had situations where they were overheating and shutting off to protect themselves oh, wow. too prematurely. Okay. And my fear was I wanted to consistent Electra that we can sell everywhere in the U.S. and feel confident that people with half an acre of turf, you know, 15, 20,000 square feet can do it without the motors shutting off. It was never a battery problem. So Swordman is sending over engineers this spring once it starts to heat up here to the U.S. And we're going to test the Electra over and over again, give it a run, let them adjust it. Right. And our goal is to have it perfectly fine-tuned here in the U.S. on our turf okay. so that we can go ahead and start ordering them again in July with an August delivery. That's the Very plan. Cool. I want to do it right. I don't want to sell something that I can't sell consistently and feel 100% confident about. Makes sense. That's a great, great, great question. Great question. So let's see what else we got in the chat here. Uh, Chaz Bishop saying, hey, around the house with Pat. All Again, all the usual suspects. Sunny Bermuda. Yeah, always always a, a Tiffway, Tiffway 419 guy yeah so awesome thanks sir uh for for chiming in and and coming to hang out sonny um travis super ta uh it's from fort lauderdale caleb i thank you for the question sir i am doing well thank you for asking um and then a, qu a question here from from chris martell i you know I'm, I'm guessing that he's a georgia bulldogs fan i'm just going to go on a limb here and, and, and i'm going to say that it's probably a bulldogs fan he says hey ron what's up i just got my baby back today tell lee i said hey uh so so for, for, so for you guys don't know, Chris is the guy that turned me on to the place where I got my Greens Master. So he and I both, both of our real mowers were, if I get a picture, I'll post it up on it at some point, but both of our real mowers were up on a truck going down to Jerry Pate to get um, tuned up for the season. So I'm glad that he got it back. I have to call you, Christian, here, how it's cutting and here, how, you know, what, if all this, all this, the little changes that the mods you made, if they uh, worked out. So thanks for, uh, for chiming in. Uh, very, very. Very cool. So, so Lee, as far as um, rollers that you guys make, you guys make um, smooth rollers, grooved rollers. We covered some of that in the video that I did like last year with you guys. But as far as someone comes and says, hey, I want to buy a roller for my, for my mower. I want to get rid of the caster wheels. How do you help them with the decision-making process, whether to go with a smooth roller or grooved? Yeah, um, you know, up until about a year ago, you didn't have an option. 
as it okay. related to the true cuts, the trimmers, or the McLean. So the answer is pretty easy in that case. <laughs> Here's right. one to roller uh, over the casters. There's a, it's a game changer. Um, part of the reason I got in this business to start with is because I fell in love with the roller design and was okay. impressed with how well it, you know, made the mower handle and how much lower I could cut without scalping. Mm -hmm. And the stripes were an after effect that I think a lot of people seek initially, but the real benefit comes around not scalping and being able to cut lower without scalping. Sure. As yeah. far as which one, um, you know, I feel like and just me mowing with them uh, that the smooth roller as your turf becomes more established. It's going to tend to float on top of the density of your grass. Sure. So if you imagine certain parts of your yard where your grass may not be as thick, the roller is going to sink down, probably down to the turf level. Places where your turf is really, really thick, it's probably going to tend to be on top of the actual grass, changing the height of cut naturally. Right. Um, with okay. the grooves, uh, it's really nice because they sink down, number one. Um, they keep a very straight track, which is really nice. It doesn't slide around. Um, you know, if you guys have, a lot of you have real mode, sometimes you can get a little wobble depending on your, your soil mm -hmm. um, smoothness. And this, Groove roller will help stay tracked and keep those lines really straight. But I think one of the greatest benefits of, this, of the groove roller actually is the way that, if you imagine this, I tell people, imagine having a dry leaf. And if you step on it like five times, it starts to break up and disintegrate. It's the same kind of theory with the groove roller. When you're putting pressure actually on the thatch layer and not the green grass blades, uh -huh. you're running it over consistently. You're actually breaking down that thatch layer okay. because you're running over it with the groove roller. So what I tell folks to answer your question initially is really if you're just starting out real mowing and your yard hasn't quite smoothed out yet, uh, it's not real dense and thick, it's your first, second, third year mowing, smooth roller is probably a really good bet because the heavy steel roller is going to help smooth that lawn out. Okay. Now, if you have an established yard and you've been real mowing for four, five, ten years um, and you've been using a smooth roller or no roller at all, I would really recommend the groove roller because it will cut through that thick, dense turf and actually put pressure on that thatch layer. It can only bring added benefit for you. I so got you. I usually use a rule of thumb four years or less smooth, four years or more. I Groove. prefer the grooved. Cool, cool. Yeah. And and and, and you guys saw that I, I, I my truck currently has a smooth roller on it and I've still got this bad boy to install here <laughs> this season. And I, I wanted to do it so badly over the winter, but I want to do a, a session where I make a cut, make some, make, do a video, I'm gonna cut with the smooth roller, throw this on and uh, see how it looks. Because the Greaves Master does an amazing job. Um, partially I think is due to that, to that grooved roller, it definitely helps out. So the True Cut's gonna be getting the same thing here soon. So, uh, so, so, so very, very cool. Uh, let's see what else we got here. Lee, uh, Brett's, Brett's Grascopade says, uh, tell Lee what's up for me, he's a good dude. So, and yeah, and Meister of my lawn saying, uh, bring it on, it's pretty, uh, Pretty awesome. And then uh, GW is, he says, hey, th actually waiting for this forum. Thanks for doing this. You are very, very welcome, sir. It's, uh, you know, definitely a service to you guys. It's uh, it's fun to to hang out and answer your questions and just, just talk about lawn care, right? It's it's, uh, it's it's a fun hobby and it's it's cool that you guys take some time out of your Friday evening to hang out with us. Okay, so Lee, another question for you. It's about real mowers, obviously. And it says, now, will real rollers <laughs> start carrying the allet? Inquiring minds uh, want to know. Question. Uh, good question. Um, I would say no. Um, okay. Uh, Roland, the gentleman that is uh, representing Alette here, super great guy. He's over in South Carolina. Uh, he and I spoke last summer. Like I said, um, our, my passion is real mowing. It's not what brand. It's just my personal preferences and the experiences I've had. And at the end of the day, um, I really believe that the Swordman mower, and I own an Alette. We have a True Cut. We have a Trimmer. We have a McLean, we've got the Swordmans, you know, we use them all. And I'm one of those guys that I don't just do this uh, for the business side. For those of you that really know me, know that truly it's because I just love mowing yards. Um, I'm a homeowner. And I think that anyone that gets into real mowing right. is gonna have a tremendous experience regardless of the brand. Um, I just feel in my experience and trying the different mowers, I just personally started to like the benefits of certain mowers and the way they handled on my yard. You know, I got a, my house is kind of set up maybe 20 feet from the road. So I do have to deal with hills. I have to deal with curves along the hills around my mulch beds. Mm -hmm. And I was just looking for the mower that was best for me. And uh, the Alette, a great mower, great company. They make some tremendous, I mean, some of those mowers they make are insane. Um, pretty expensive, but they're insane. 
the residential models, they just weren't to me as much as I enjoyed the swordman. That's just my personal preference for a couple of reasons, but we, I don't think we'll be carrying them. We don't carry mowers. Um, our, my, my motto is not just to carry mowers to sell them. I truly have to believe in them. My guys right. have to believe in them. And I want to be behind something that I can tell folks and feel 200% confident that they're waiting for Christmas for six weeks. And when it shows up, it's going to be one of the best days for a grown man's life or woman for that matter. <laughs> right. I get Great. so many Great. calls and emails about, you know, pictures of delivery day and just, man, if you can make a grown person get that excited about anything, life's good. And that's why I get so excited about this. You're right. You're right. I, I, whenever, whenever my, whenever my, my mower went off to get maintenance, it was a very sad day. And when it came, literally when the guy brought it back and I knew it was all sharpened up and he was about to run it, he was bringing it off the truck. But no, 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 I'll get it. I, I, I drove it off the truck, ease it up the driveway. You know, it's, uh, it's, it's part of the family. So, so kind of a it continuation is. of the question about, about the Alette. Um, so you guys will carry it, but what about like sharpening options for sharpening the Alette cartridge? Do you guys, um, I'm not sure if you guys, I know you guys will take the swords in, but do you guys know anyone that will take care of the Alette cartridge if, it, if they bring it in or send it in? Um, I, I mean, it's kind of a challenge, and I'll, I'll tell you what, what part of the challenge is. Not with Alette, but it's also with Sorbent. Let's just call a spade a spade. Um, both those reels are spin ground reels. Okay. Um, and there's not a lot of, you know, traditionally we had our True Cuts, our McLean's, and our California trimmers, which are all, again, residential reel mowers, and they are all relief grind mowers. So the footprint to service those mowers traditionally has been shops that do relief grinding. So then okay. you bring in a spin ground type of reel, a let and swordman, um, different approach. There's pros and cons, or there's people that believe one's better than the other. I was actually surprised at how much I, I never really believed that the spin ground was going to be as good, especially with the swordman, because it's a no contact reel. I mean, it's hardly touching that bed knife. Mm -hmm. and I've been surprised at how well it cuts compared to the true cut that I've been used to with the big relief ground and that loud scrape. And you know, you're cutting when you're hearing the metal. Oh, yeah. Ching across. Yeah. Um, but as it relates to the Alette, uh, you know, we're set up to grind the Swordman reels. Um, you know, it's a process and we have a dedicated spin grinder for that, for both sizes. And also one of the big things that we learned the hard way, honestly, was we have custom foam that we pay a pretty penny for, for every single reel so that we can ship these with heavy duty boxes across the country without damage. Okay. And they're not made for the Alette. I don't have the, the foam, the setup. Um, it would be a pretty big expense. I'm just not sure that that's something that we could take on. It's something we can do for the swordman because we know what the volume is. Gotcha. But if you're looking to get an Alette sharpened, uh, you definitely would want to check with any local real mower companies. And if not, I would suggest a golf course company because a lot of times they spin grind, but it depends what their liability policies are. Not all right. of them do it anymore. Yep. Yeah. They may, may not question, want to deal with though. the Republic. Yeah. Great question, guys. Yeah. So this is, this is a question that, that I get fairly um, often. And my question is always, my answer has always been, it's, you're going to, it's going to be a tough time, but it's a question here from El Vio Favares, uh, 1976. And he says, any real mowers that will cut a uh, turf type tall fescue. So any, any mowers that'll go up to 3.5 inches to four inches. I, I don't, I, that's, that's going to be a tough one, man. I don't, you know, that's really not a real mower thing so much. LVR. I mean, that's really, really, once you get past, an inch and a half, two inches, I'd say. Once you get lower than two inches, you're really, you know, you're really pushing it. I mean, Lee, I don't know what your thoughts are. Three and a half, four inches, anything that you can think of that'll, that'll do that, do a good job with it? I can't think of anything. You know, I had a gentleman call me today asking about St. Augustine in Florida. Um, and, you know, he wants to cut it three and a half, four inches. And the truth is the rotary mower is your best bet. There's some awesome rotary mowers out there. But I think some of the true benefits of a reel is the ability to get it down low. And yep. certain grasses don't like to be low. So it's just unfortunately not a good fit. And it's probably not worth the investment compared to what you, the result you'll get from a rotary, even if they could go that high. Sure. I, I agree. I mean, it's, guys, when it always comes to mowing, I always, you always hear me say like outside of like making sure you get enough sunlight, good soil, like the best, the most, but the best thing you can do for your turf is to cut it regularly right with the right piece of equipment. So with a, for a Bermuda or zoysia or like warm season grasses that like being cut low, like a real mower is the right answer, but a real mower is not the right answer for everything. You look at like um like uh, like uh, like some of these other guys that 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 have like cool season lawns or taller grass. They cut with rotaries and they get a, they get an amazing cut. It looks really good. So for taller heights, like a rotary is a you know is the right tool for the job. So real mower isn't. I, I hate as much as it pains me to say, real mower is not the answer to everything. To most things, but not not to. Not to everything. Uh, Lee, you got a shout out here from Harold. He says he's picked up his swordman tonight. He can't wait to fire it yeah. up. 
All right. Um, hey, thanks, Harold. Sorry I yeah. missed you. I think I was working on my IT with Ron. <laughs> yeah, no, no problem. We got it worked out, man. We got you looking. You looking and sounding good. It looks it looks good. All right. So yes. super take question for you again about the about the Alec. You have to rethink this. A lot of Alec questions is with Alec becoming popular in the U.S. Do you see your company offering a slotted front roller for the homeowner of Alec uh, lawnmowers? Alec currently doesn't have one available. Any chance of a slotted um, roller or grooved roller for one, possibly? You know, I, I have, we haven't considered it. I'll be honest. Okay. That's just okay. the honest truth. Um, I haven't had a whole lot of demand um, that I know of. Honestly, we haven't. Shoot you straight. I just haven't had a lot of people asking for it. I uh, can't see why we can't make one. Um, but yeah, I mean, they've got the rake behind that smooth roller. I haven't really talked to Roland, or maybe I need some some feedback on why they don't make one. To be honest with you, I don't know why they wouldn't. Gotcha. Themselves. Okay. Awesome. Well, guys, if you guys are enjoying this so far, be sh as you're sitting down with your beverage of choice, you're sitting down with your burrito, your taco to you know have a sip selling for the live stream. Be sure to, to hit that like button on the way. And I really appreciate it. it. Sends you know good vibes to the YouTube algorithm. Lets us know we're in here having a great time. So I would really, really appreciate it if you would, and it costs you nothing. So it's always a a fun gesture. I appreciate the support. So Lee, question for you about backlapping. This is a great question that I wanted to bring up to you. So um, so Papa Mo's low. He says, Lee, I saw a comment from you that you can't backlap the swordman. Does that, is that mean the only option is to send it in to be sharpened? No, that's a great question. No, actually. Um, good question. So I've seen, I don't know if you guys have seen, how many of you guys are on the lawn forum, but, you know, there was a good discussion going on about backlapping and a let. Um, you know, I, I guess in theory it could, would help, but also on the other hand of that, backlapping a spin grind really doesn't have quite that advantage because when you think of a relief, it's actually a triangle on the blade. It's what you're putting on it, essentially, layman's terms. And what you're doing actually is as you run that reel against the bed knife, that triangle starts to become more of kind of a rounded hill at the okay. point. And when you back lap, you're cutting back against it and you're making another triangle a little bit shorter down, almost like a diamond, if you can imagine. So on a relief grind, back lap makes a ton of sense because you're taking what was a rounded edge that's been worn down off of the reel and actually using the bed knife to just make it a new point. Okay. And then bringing the reel down. When you have a spin ground, you have a 90 degree angle. And that 90 degree angle is coming forward. And really the only edge cutting against the bed knife is that leading 90 degree angle, if you think of a square kind of. Um, and back lapping it would take a lot of meat because you're not losing that 90 degree angle on the back edge of the blade. Mm -hmm. You're only losing it on the front edge as it comes around and hits the bed knife. So unless you back lap a lot and you take out a lot of that nice back end at 90 to make the front end 90 again work well, it would be a lot of work to spin ground and really see a lot of benefit unless you're just trying to take a nick or a mark um, out of the real, bit, uh, real blade. But um, one of the cool things I think about the Swordman that we're going to be promoting a lot this year is, you know, if you just replace the bed knife, now uh -huh. visualize that, um, you know, the alloy that the bed knife is made of on a Swordman is a lot um, less dense than that alloy that's used on the reel itself. Okay. So the reel doesn't wear, the bed knife does. Um, and unlike traditional reel mowers, those bed knives are intended to go years. Um, they cost about $150, $200, maybe even more on the greens mowers. Mm -hmm. But on the Swordman, they're $20 and they're disposable. So the okay. whole premise there is to get a nice spin grind after you scalp in the spring and then have one or two bed knives stocked away to exchange in July and then August or July and September. And then you can bring that bed knife down and you're getting a brand new 90 on that bed knife edge, which is what really cuts it on the reel. Gotcha. Okay. So just, just not, so there's, there's other ways of, of achieving a good cut um, without, you know, especially what you're saying is that by, by backlapping it, it's just not, it's just not something that makes sense for the, uh, for the swordman. Very, very cool. And, and so to, to be able to replace that bed knife, again, it's that bed knife that's giving you that nice sharp edge. Mm -hmm. um, it's just simple. You don't have to spin and ship the reel back. You do it once a year and then a bed knife or two for 20 bucks. It makes it really and 20 simple. bucks. Yeah. And time. You're never and down. Time. You're never down. You're always mowing. That's the worst part about real mowing in my mind is going on vacation and coming back and starting over again. You sure. It's such a great looking turf. And it's like, ah, oh, you got away from me. You got away. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, on the lawn training is saying, hey, Ron, I'm not into the real mower club yet. Keyword yet. Not yet. 
Uh, but looking forward to the conversation tonight. Well, I hope you're enjoying the conversation so far. Uh, it's been, uh, it's, it's, yeah, it should be, a, should be a great time. All about real mowers. Obviously, we'll take other questions too, but really, tonight is all about real mower night. Um, so Sunny Bermuda, this is a good question. This is a good food for you, Lee. Says, um, so what causes real coning? Is it caused by soft metal? Honestly, I don't know the answer to that one. I, no. I don't. Some things, I got to be honest with you all, it's just not something that's in my wheelhouse. Um, a lot of the service guys that we work with, we have a partnership at RealWorks. Mm -hmm. It's about two miles away from us and always have. Sometimes there's things above my pay grade, and I don't know the complete answer to that. I'd be lying to you all if I did. Sure. Yeah, no worries. Yeah. I know when it comes to um, to to getting the coning out, you have to be specific about the type of grinder that you use. And not all not all grinders will take the coning out of the um, out of the reel. I need to ask Jerry Pay the brand of the one they had because these guys are awesome. You sit down, you have a conversation. It's like talking to, to Lee. Ask them about mowers. They'll tell you everything about grinding and cutting and spinning grinds, relief grinds, all this kind of stuff. And they were telling me that, you know, the one thing about them um, and any other one else, and that why you really want to send your mower to them or anyone that um, that 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 has a particular type of grinder is that it can pull the coning out of it so you, you can sure you're going to get a clean cut across the bed knife. But um, but yeah, good question. It's a good thing to research. I'll try and get an answer for you by next week, Sunny Bermuda. Great one. Um, let's see. So a uh, question here from Brett's Grassipades. Brett, thanks for coming to hang out, man. He says, will Swerve be coming out with a wider reel in the future? Maybe a 26 inch or a larger. That's a, now, that's a question I'd like to know because, you know, the, what are, what are the, what's the widest Swerve now? 20 inch? What, what does it go up 22. to? 22. 22. See, so 26 would be, would be nice. So any, any chance of that? You know, when I was over in the check, it was a year ago, right before COVID, January, I was over mm. there at Swordman, and they showed me this amazing looking 44 inch hybrid gas and battery powered mower that oh, wow. they're trying to produce. Um, to my knowledge, uh, they aren't creating one right now. But again, is this they're really trying to keep up with the production that they have at the 22 inch um, and keeping up with supply? I don't see why they wouldn't in the future, especially if the demand is there. And it'd be more likely in the States than anywhere else when you consider Europe and Australia and some of these other places have smaller yards. Um, but no, there are no plans currently for them to go to a 26 that I know of. Very cool. Very, very Good cool. Good question, Brett. Yeah, yeah, good question here. Also from, from Chris Martell. I, so I've not, the Verticutter um, option, he's talking about how close the blades are um, for verticutting on the Swordman. Have you guys ever considered doing a true Bermuda Verticutter where the blades are spaced a little bit tighter so it'd be better for verticutting? And, That's and actually it, something that they are working on. Um, there's been there's been feedback from here in the US. Uh, I've used it on Bermuda before and a lot of times you get those stolen Stalins that are being pulled up and it leaves kind of a, a raggedy look to the grass more than right. you want. Um, you look at some of the other companies that are out there that have uh, what they, everybody's classifying as true birdie cutters, and they're sharper, they're tighter, they're more of a star configuration. Mm -hmm. um, we're definitely looking at that right now, uh, but uh, the plan is to make one like that. Okay. I haven't yet. Uh, okay. I, I, that's a goal. So, so Great it's question it's, though. So so it's in so it's in the cards. Okay, cool. Yeah, because is, for sure. because for me, especially for me this year, this one of my plans. I've, I've kind of shared this with you already. Is that one of my plans this year is to overseed and 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 part of that process is to thin out the turf by using some verticutting, kind of what you guys did with the one um, the Tiff Tough uh, plot uh, in the turf yep. part. Um, and, I, and we might end up using a Swordman for that or using, but uh, having a true verticutter, um, you know, it would be really, really valuable for someone that, you know, e it's a couple things. One, either is doing seating options, but also if you're maintaining that Bermuda really tight, kind of like you were saying with some of the Zoysias, it gets really dense. So being able to thin that out um, with like a true verticutting cartridge, I think there'd be some value in that if you guys, you know, produced one. And it, I'll be honest though, we, to your point on the turf park, I've, I've never done winter rye. Gotcha. So just for fun this year, uh, we actually scalped or brought the Bermuda down low. And then we uh, used that verti cutter, the Swordman verti cutter, ran it two different directions perpendicular. And we had tremendous success having the seed take. Um, it worked out great for overseeding. Okay. And it's worked out well for, you know, verti cutting, but I do think there's some other designs out there that look to be a lot better. Gotcha. Okay. Cool. So let's see what other questions we got here. We got one from Matt Smith. Matt says, when it comes to front rollers, smoother groove, can you explain the pros and cons? Okay, we already kind of covered that one. We beat that one to death. So uh, great question. Uh, question here from Christina Phillips. Hey, Elliot. Thanks for stopping in tonight, Christina. man. I appreciate it. And Christina Phillips says, hi, Ron. I just bought a drag net to top dress my lawn. Any advice? Um, here's the thing, Christina. I have not, I've not used a drag net before. Every time I've, I've left, I've done, um, I've top dressed, 
I've used either a level on, like a leveling rake. If you guys saw when I did Alex's, um, I, we did Alex's um, lawn last year. Um, we used one of those um, lakes from r and products. It's like, uh, looks almost like a great, so we can get a picture of it up here for you and show you what it looks like. Um, so I've not used a drag net. So the, the, the pros and cons that I've heard about those, I've heard some people say that they don't do as nice a job on, on, on flat turf as far as um, not following contours. When you have like a, um, like a hard rake, it's very easy for you to see where there are lower high spots. So let's say this is the bottom of the leveling rake, right? And like there's got a low spot here. It's gonna be really easy to tell where the low spots are. Whereas some of these drag, um, these drab, drag mats, if they're like, especially chain, it'll just kind of fall into the groove. It's not gonna really like force the material to kind of, to follow that, that plane or edge, if that makes sense. So uh, I, I, I think that, you need something to work it in. I think a drag mat's gonna work fine. Like the first time my lawn was was top dressed, it was done um, with a drag with a drag mat, and it it turned out pretty good. Um, so yeah, I mean, I, I would say go with it and see what you um see what you come back with. One thing you'll notice, one thing you might find too, is whenever you put the, whenever you put your sand down and then you drag it in, that's gonna also let you see areas where you can maybe come back with a little bit more sand, um, you know, and then drag that in. So being able to work the material in. Um, with some kind of a tool, whether it be a rake or a drag man, is, a, is an important part of the top dressing process. Because when you put that sand down, it's gonna look, and it's just dropping out like the top dresser or drop strip with the, with, the, with the shovel, it's gonna look great. It's gonna look, oh wow, it looks really, really smooth until you start dragging something against it and then you're gonna expose a lot of the high and, and low spots. So having something, whether it be a drag net or, um, you know, some, or, a level, or a leveling rake, like what I've used, um, something like that. Either of those are, are great options and important tools. So um, yeah, great, great question. If you have any qu other questions, whenever you get to the point where you're actually doing it, feel free to drop me an email here. My email is right here, ron at golfcourselon.com. I try to answer um, emails as quickly as I can. So drop me an email if you have any other specific questions that I can help out with. And also check out the videos on the YouTube channel um, where I've done uh, top dressing with a, a, a leveling rake and also with just a, a landscaper's rake. So I've shown you both options for getting a pretty good result, but I, I think you're going to get a good result with the with the drag mat. Uh, just um, you know, just just take your time. Make sure you work all the material in and uh, enjoy it. You're you're gonna. Here's I I will warn you. Just small disclaimer. I know very few people that top dress their lawn one time. So don't think this is going to be a one and done thing. You know, because you're going to put it down. It's going to look good. And you're going to be like, you know what? Maybe just one more time, it might look that much better. So just get. You know, it's going to be an iterative process. Don't you have plenty of times to to modify it as you go along. So uh, don't get too hung up on getting it perfect the right the first time. All right, so Lee, a question for you says, uh, would you just love to give away a real mower? Ha, huh, I don't know. We'll, I, maybe it's maybe at some point. I think that you guys have done them in the past, right? But um, I don't, you know. It's... Yes, uh, stay tuned. I've got big plans this spring. Uh, All right. I've got a couple of uh, custom mowers in the mix as we speak. They're being they're being made, let's just say. So it uh, looks like around the first week of March, uh, we'll be giving away uh, one of, you know, <laughs> I like to have fun with this. You know, if we're going to do it, let's have fun. So uh, we've got two of the most unique mowers you'll ever see, have ever seen, that we've custom designed that we'll be uh, unveiling here in about three weeks, I guess it is. Nice. Very cool. So there you go. So stay tuned to the, you know, Real Rollers website, mailing list, anything that they have going on. And I'm sure there'll be a big thing where they will notify everybody about it. Um, once he lets once he lets everybody know, I'll also mention it on the channel. So you will, you will have a chance, Meister of My Lawn, to win a hot rotted out uh mower so just just stay <laughs> just stay tuned for that uh this thing with real rollers they do everything with style all right so uh roger sylvester chimes in he says that he just put a new bed knife on and had a relief grind done on the reel mowing a little less than uh half an acre twice a week that's 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 a lot of work um how long would you go before grinding the reel again or backlapping he's got a true cut he's got a c27 uh yeah I'm you going with this one? You going with some? Yeah, yeah. So, the true cut so, 27s. yeah. So, I, I mean, you have a, you have a twenty-seven. I have a, I have a twenty-five. But I, I'd say, you know, whenever whenever you get down and and, and look at the turf, um, and if you're seeing that the edge of the grass is starting to, because even with a, with a real mower, it, you can get a little bit of tearing. If you're seeing the cut isn't as clean, um, mm -hmm. that's when it's a good time to consider um, taking it in to 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 get it to get it uh, sharpened. Um, one thing I also noticed too is is a sound. Like when I get a, a mower back, you get a brand new real mower back and it's sharpened or true cut or whatever it is, like the mower note, the, 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 like the sound of the engine as it's cutting rarely changes. Like it's because it's, it's so sharp, it's very efficient. And you'll notice that whenever the reel starts to get dull, um, it's it's the, the mower labors a lot more. So in addition to the sound of the mower, actually looking at your grass, 
The next thing you can do is also, um, make sure you wear gloves when you do this, but you can you take them over, make sure it's off, powered off, um, disengage the reel, and you can see how see how well it cuts paper. You can see if it will cut paper. That's another test you can see to um, to determine if it's if it's beginning to lose its edge or if it's time to you know back lap or take it in and, and get it and get it ground. I mean, really, what I found, and you're cutting a lot more than I am. You've got like half an acre, and you, uh, is I typically can get by with a good sharpen at the beginning of the season that lasts me throughout the season. So as long as you are, um, so you scalp your lawn, kind of like what Lee was saying, you scalp your turf. And then after you scalp, you take the mower in and get the, the real and bed knife sharp, sharp and get it all cherried up. And as long as you are only cutting grass, so you're not cutting pine straw, you're not cutting twigs, like you're being really disciplined of only cutting grass, you can typically get by with a with, with a season um, on, a, on a cut, on, at least on, on the true cuts. Maybe with the swordman, you might want to switch it out. But with the true cuts, I found that to be true in my case. But again, you are cutting twice the amount of turf that I am. Square feet. Yeah, That's so twice the amount. So that so that you may you may have to you may need to sharpen up, you may need a touch point up here, you know, July, maybe you know, summertime, you may need to take it in and get it sharpened. And so I, I would say in your case, plan for a sharpen at the beginning of the season and then a sharpen mid-season, and that should put you in pretty good shape, assuming you're only cutting grass. Um Lee, any other any other thoughts? I just think that's like the optimal opportunity for a back lap, to be sure. honest. You know, you get that fresh ground in the beginning. And uh, maybe a, I determined it by two things. You mentioned your first answer was exactly what I was thinking. You know, I do it based on what my grass looks like. Mm -hmm. you know, looking at the reel, it's, you'll start to notice. I noticed two things. One, it's just not cutting quite as cleanly and consistently. Um, two, the length of the grass blades. Uh, to me, it's amazing when you have that beautiful, fresh grind on any reel mower. Yep. The grass blades, even if you're cutting, you're not supposed to, but let's say you're cutting a half an inch off of grass, which you shouldn't do. I get it. Um, but man, a real nice grind minces those grass blades down to about a quarter of an inch. And you're just like, wow, it's just paper. on It's just amazing. Yep. Um, when the grass blades start to get longer that you're cutting, that's being put in the grass catcher or on your yard, you know, you're getting duller. And then also uh, the back lapping, I think, especially with the relief grind reel, you know, I would get that fresh grind after scalping, like you mentioned, and 20,000 square feet's no joke. I mean, you really, people often will call us and say, I've got an acre of turf. It's like, ah. You live on three quarters of an acre. You live on an acre. Your turf's really ten thousand square feet, which is really big for a residential yard. Right. But to have twenty thousand, I think you'll be back lapping for sure. Maybe June, and you may want to do it again in September to get through the season. Um, I think that's a perfect opportunity. Yep. Great. Awesome. Yeah. But God bless you, man. That's 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 uh that's that is an undertaking. Uh, he needs a awesome. sulky behind it that he can ride on. <laughs> yeah, or or you you're almost you're almost getting into triplex uh, territory, man. Yeah, that's uh, that's getting up there. All right, so uh, grown man grass says he just got his greens master sharpened and tuned up by Cherry Pay. Uh, Witty, uh, he's uh, still waiting for the call from Lee, uh, Santa Sa Santa Lee, right, uh, to rush out there and pick up my new swordman. So, so Lee, it's, it's like yeah. a bunch of uh, people that have orders pending. They can't wait to get their mowers here. They're chiming in tonight. Uh, in the meantime, you can come hang out. We're here every Friday afternoon. Yeah. Looking for somebody to come around and we end up mowing and hanging out for the afternoon. We try to block it off just to hang out with folks and enjoy the good weather when it comes. Awesome. Yep. Uh, Grace, hey, thanks for chiming in. Hey, Ted, nice to see you. Uh, thanks. I appreciate you uh, chiming in on the live stream. Uh, let's see here. So, uh, so Lee, we got, um, it's an intervention is what's coming up in this next question. So it's, it's, a, it's a tough one. We got to think it out here carefully. This man is going to need some, some help. So, Stewart says he needs some talking points for his wife <laughs> to convince her that a real mower is the only way to truly dominate the neighborhood. What advice can you give old Stewart on, uh, on, on, on talking to his better half? Yeah. So, you know, my wife calls it my therapy. Uh, sure. You know, it's just, it's just my way to get away from, don't think it's the wrong way, work, kids, family, obligations. It's kind of my moment to be OCD. And, you know, one thing to consider is the amount of time that you spend doing it. You know, there's nothing more satisfying than coming home after a long day uh, of doing whatever you're doing. And the first thing you notice is that yard um, and you want to itch to get out there. Yep. If you're spending an hour to, you know, I'll be honest, three hours a week, probably is more likely out in your yard. And you're doing that for 26 weeks out of the year. There's probably not another tool or another toy that you have where you'll spend that much more time doing it outside of maybe your car. So, yeah, it's an investment. Point. No question. Uh, but if you think about hobbies, there's a lot of expensive hobbies out there. And, you know, a one-time charge for two grand or three grand hurts. But if it gets you five, seven, ten years of pleasure, I, it's tough to justify up front. But, you know, this is something that long-term is really something that will keep you out of trouble. 
I, I agree. And the thing I also say, I mean, one, the I am a firm believer of the buy once, cry once mentality. Like buy buy the right thing, the right tool the first time and be done with it. Um, but also from a standpoint of like property value, right? Now, like having a real mode lawn is not really gonna increase property value, but think about it. You walk by, a, uh, you drive by a house and the lawn's full of weeds and it's all looking like really terrible. Your mind is probably thinking, I wonder what the inside of the house looks like. But if you see a you see a lawn, you drive by the house, you drive, and the, the lawn is like manicured, very well taken care of. In other words, if someone's spending that much time on the outside of the house, you also think the inside of the house is probably well taken care of too. Not always the case, but um, if you ever one day decide you're gonna sell your property, it's something that you could also consider that, you know, in, in my mind, I'm going to give that a better look. And from a from a, from a curb appeal, I can't tell you how many times people will be driving through the neighborhood and they'll stop, they'll slow down. When they get to Alex's lawn or my lawn, literally people will literally slow down and stop. And you'll see people walking, sometimes their dogs, they'll stop and touch the grass to see if it's fake. So it's, it's there is something to be said for a real cut lawn from, if you know, if your wife likes to be, you know, the envy of the neighborhood or have people talking about her property, Real more is a great thing to help with that for sure. Um, great, great question. Okay, so Chris Silvis, a question for you about the Edwin. He says, will there be any new colors for the Edwin this year um, that you could talk about? We, you know, right now we're stocking nine colors. And one of the challenges I have with being in a back order is uh, we're having to order these mowers 90 days in advance. So I'm really using historical data based okay. on the last three years and the trends. So, you know, I can tell you, 62% of the population right now buys the stock anthracic color. So I order 62% roughly when I place an order. Right. So as far as bringing in new colors, I we can order any color if folks are willing to wait eight weeks. I need an eight-week lead time. And I can literally thousands of colors. So if you have an RAL number, we can get it done. Um, so there's no limitation to that. The only challenge is, you know, when we're in a situation that we're in until we can catch up, Mm -hmm. I'm trying to predict what colors are coming and they kind of, as they get sold, we have some folks that want the bright green candy apple green mower and they might be waiting eight weeks and somebody that wants a stock color or maybe a certain color that no one's bought yet, it could be shipped out in a week. So it's one of the challenges we deal with, but yeah, any colors available. That's the cool thing about it. And I think speaking to the giveaway, you'll see some, uh, some new flair coming out of the Edwin colors. Nice. Very, very cool. Very cool. Yep. Uh, Brent Breaker just saying he just got his new Edmund two days ago. Thanks for the personal delivery, Eric. That's cool, man. So you get that get that personalized delivery uh, action. That's that's pretty awesome. So we kind of covered yeah. some of this, but we'll revisit Scott's question. Is how do you know when it's time to get a new bed knife on a True Cut P20? Um, I'm not familiar with the P20. I know this is is the P20 like the the small the 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 um the not it's commercial the version. Mm-hmm. The homeowner yeah, model? It's a great mower. It's the homeowner model. It has the GC engine versus the GX. I'm sorry, Honda. Let me back up. I'm trying to speak in over a little bit. But yeah, the uh, the P is the one with the uh, GC Honda motor. Okay. The, uh, the H is the one that actually has the... Uh, oh, sorry. G I got it backwards. The H has the uh, P GC20 or GC right. uh, Honda engine. Getting this backwards. Uh, but as far as... There's really two models that they make in the 20 inch. And the big difference between the two is just the Honda engine. Sorry, I flubbed that. No. My number's confused. No. But uh, as far as the bed knife goes, you know, traditionally it's going to be where you take it to a shop that does a relief grind and they're going to suggest it when it gets to the point. You know, you're never going to be back lapping a bed knife away. So it's generally when you go to a relief grind uh, type of shop that does that for you, they'll usually suggest, but it has to do with its wear level. And if they can't put a new fresh edge on it, kind of like we spoke about earlier in the call with the reels. If there's not enough meat, I guess you could call it on the bed knife to create a new 90 when they face it. Sure. That's when you're gonna have to get a new bed knife. And it just has to do with getting close to the frame. Okay. You run out of metal. So in many ways, you, when you take it in, the shop that's doing the, the grinding work on it is gonna suggest that you know, your time it's time for a new bed knife. So just kind of let them decide, I guess is what I'm what I'm hearing. And if you're gonna do it yourself, you just, you'll realize you run out of actual metal to, reface the bed knife you're going to be up against the frame so okay. there's no more chance to face that bed knife okay very very cool the chris martell says he's got his swordman uh scalp day coming up soon uh let's see what other questions oh this is a good this is a good one uh so rocket man this is a question about um real blade choice so uh swordman options include the six and ten blade reels how do you best determine how many blades to use like what's what's the the, the criteria that goes into that so that's an awesome question. Get it a ton. Um, the mentality is always more is better, but that's not always the case when it comes to residential reels. Mm -hmm. um, so a couple ways to look at it. What it really has to do with 
is how often are you cutting? And a lot of folks tie it to the height of cut, but technically that's not really true. It has to do with how often you're cutting. Okay. And the reason being is if you keep your yard, let's take height out of it for a second. But if you're cutting your yard at a half inch and you're mowing it every single day, the growth that occurs over a one day period might be just one millimeter. So as you're going across the yard being self-propelled, you need more blades to be coming around a 10 blade to catch that small amount of grass that has grown overnight. Versus if you have a six blade, you're going to want those spaced out. You want the speed with which the next blade comes around to be spaced out as you're propelling forward okay. to catch that grass and bring it in for a clean cut. Now, the reason people confuse that with height of cut is because often when you think about the one third rule, one third of a quarter of an inch is not very much. It's millimeters, right? One third of three quarters of an inch is a quarter of an inch. So the whole premise around that is whenever you cut low, you should be mowing really, really often because you want to stick to that one third rule, which might mean only a millimeter or two that you're cutting off. You need a reel with a lot of blades. I you look at you. a greens mower, they have models with 11 and 13 for the greens. But for homeowners, 90% of the time, a six blade, a seven blade is perfect. That's usually, you know, mowing every three to four days or twice a week, um, anywhere from a quarter of an inch to a little bit over a quarter of an inch of grass blade you're cutting off. Sure. Um, if you get too many blades and your grass is too long, you'll find that it starts to bind up because the blades are coming around too fast and just pinching it and you're getting an uneven cut. I got you. So it's it's so it's really depending on your practices and 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 how often you're cutting. That's that's the big thing. How often? How much? How much material how are you removing in each cut? How got often will you commit to cut? Yep, I got you. Cool. Um, so question for Jesse. Jesse, you may have to reach out to them um, to lead on this, but he might be able to answer it. How can he get the foam box for this spring? I guess he's talking about for shipping a reel in or a cartridge. Sure. In. Um, you just send us uh, an email. We'll get that out to you. Um, now we ship all the reels with an empty cartridge box as well as the custom foam for the reels okay. to try to take away that process. But we didn't start that until around mid-2020. Sure. Okay. Sounds Just good. So check email. Out. Yep. Go to realrotors.com. You can find their information there or give them a ring and they'll they'll take care of you. Okay. So cool question for uh, from John Gotch about reel mowers. He says, besides uh, me traveling from Louisiana to Georgia, how can I get to test a true cut or swordman reel mower? It's gotta be someone in your area that's got one, John, I would think. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, check out some of the forums or uh, or, or see in your area. There's gotta be someone that that's has one. I mean, and I'll tell you something. If you ever like happen to be driving through a neighborhood and you see someone mowing with a true cut, I, I, it's never happened to me. I've never seen someone that had a real mower that if you stop them and want to talk to them about their mower that did not, you know, pause and take a moment to explain like, you know, kind of like how we're talking about it. Like most real mower people just are, just love to talk about their equipment. So if you could find someone that has one, they might let you make a pass with it or, or whatnot. But I mean, yeah, I can't think of any other options um, outside of coming to Georgia or, or I, don't, I don't know if there's any places in Louisiana that are that, that, that carry them or distributors for you guys or whatever, Lee. I don't know if you have any, anything so, on yeah, that. No, no, we, you know, pre-COVID days, you know, it's a different world, right? Um, but pre-COVID days, one of the benefits of being the only dealer and distributor of specifically Swordman, I can't speak for True Cut, mm -hmm. um, but for Swordman is we know where every single person that owns a Swordman for the most part lives. And uh, we're in 49 states. So out of the 49 states, out of the 50, everywhere but Alaska, there's a Swordman. I can think of about 10 customers in Louisiana. So if you want to ever demo a Swordman specifically, uh, shoot us an email. Let us know what state you're in. And what I've done in the past is I would email people that asked uh, all the cities where I know there's Swordman customers, not their names, not their contact information, just the cities. And then they'd pick two or three locations that are close to them. I'd reach out to the Swordman customer and ask them if they'd be interested to do a demo for a potential, you know, buyer. And I got to be honest, I can't think of one person that said no in the past, but this was pre-COVID. And we really pulled away from that because it's not fair to put anybody at any undue risk. Sure. Even if they say yes, I just don't want to be the guy that asks. Um, as things settle down, I think it'd be completely understandable to ask someone if they want to do it or not. As far as True Cut, you know, they've been around for a lot of years and there are a lot of places. So I don't have a way to tell you where one would be or wouldn't be unless you come to Georgia, unfortunately. Sure. Okay. Well, yep. Just keep looking, uh, John. And again, reach out to Lee. They might be able, they, you never know. I mean, you, again, if you can, if you come across someone with one, 
um, you know, they're, they're definitely going to be willing to help you out. You know, if you were around here, I'm sure you could come by the turf park, but uh, don't have a better answer for you, unfortunately. Uh, let's see, Princess Cut Lawn Care. George is in the house. What's going on, man? Thanks for coming to hang out. Uh, George has got uh, up in Chicago, up in Chi-Town. Also runs a YouTube channel. Does a lot of, this time of year, a lot of um, snowblower content. But if you're interested in a <laughs> snowblower, which is a piece of equipment that I hope to never have to own. If I, if I have to ever have to buy a snowblower, I'm doing something wrong. I'm, I'm going to move. I'm going to move further south. So, uh, but yeah, check out George's uh, content. And Matt, Matt DeGuire says, I'm so excited to be here with Lee, Casey Affleck, Purcell, and, <laughs> uh, and Ron. Uh, that's good stuff. Um, okay, so uh, on the electric, it sounds like you, it's going to be August, but we have another question here from Rob Zilla on the wait time on an electric. Is there even really a wait time as yet? There's really not a wait time. It's really doing testing here in the States in the hottest temperatures we can find with some really tough zoysia and running it for 15,000 square feet for a month or two. And making okay. sure that, again, those motors don't shut off to protect themselves. we got to just program the, the boards to be a little bit different than they do in Europe and in Australia. Sure. Okay, yeah, great, great question. So a question here about overseeding. So from Trin Davies says, I'm planning on overseeding my thin common Bermuda with Arden 15. I cannot use Roundup per the wife. Uh, it's, probably, it's probably a good idea. Um, what are the best practices to get the Arden to beat the common Bermuda? Okay, so here's, here's a misnomer. It's like as far as the, the overseeding your existing Bermuda with Arden and thinking that the Arden is going to take over or choke out the existing Bermuda, that's probably, it's kind of unlikely to happen. What you will end up with is what a lot of cool season lawns are like, where they're kind of like mutt lawns a little bit, where you have, um, you think of like, like a lot of cool season lawns that'll be some part bluegrass, a little bit of rye, a little bit of fescue, a little bit of everything kind of mixed in there. And overall, if the grass is, if this, if the grass is even throughout, like those different grass types, it still looks good, right? So if you're planning on overseeding um, your combo meter with Arden 15, I would say make sure you just do a really, really good job to try and get as even coverage um, with your seeding uh, project, make sure you water it. Like most seeding projects fail due to inadequate water, uh, Trin Dave. Um, and then what you'll end up with is a hybrid, like Arden 15 common lawn. And overall, it will look it will look good. It'll look better. But the, I, I don't want you to go into this thinking that there's going to be a way to really um, seed on top of common Bermuda and that the Arden 15 is going to get rid of it. This is not just not really a thing. I mean, if you can glyphosate, like AKA Roundup, the common Bermuda a couple of times and try and nuke it and get it out, that might be an option to get more Arden 15, but um, it's unfortunately there's not really a way to to to, to do what I think um, you're asking. Just just really focus on doing a good job, getting a nice even oversee when you put it down, and you'll end up with a hybrid that overall will look pretty good. The only time you really notice color differences is whenever you're going into dormancy. Um, if you know the areas that, that 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 where the Arden didn't take as well, those areas are going to fall off in color faster than the areas where it did, and it's just it's gonna, it's going to be an iterative process. So just just know that know that there's going to be some unevenness in color. Um, when the lawn is transitioning out of dormancy and when it's going into dormancy, especially the first year. But it should get better as you as you do it more. But great, great, great question. Great question. Uh, let's see. Uh, Bermuda Brian up in the mountains doing a little skiing. skiing. Uh, Got to get on. Thanks, uh, Real Rollers and Ron. And um, so thing for you here, Lee says, I got my, I love Real Rollers. I got my Edwin 45 four weeks ago and it is great. Customer service is outstanding. Thanks, Eric. Oh, uh, let's see what else here. We got a bunch of uh, snow questions and um, uh, yeah, that's, that sounds horrible, man. I'm sorry. Yeah. T t 12 inches just still stuck on top of a lawn. Nothing to do but wait and melt. Yeah. And oh, okay, just, yeah, yes. Yeah, it, it is an awesome hat, right? <laughs> yeah. Who knows, man? That's cool. Yeah. And then, uh, so Princess Cut Lawn Care says, Hey Lee, this is a good one. Why does Swordman swap out the Kawasaki motor for a Briggs? Do they plan on doing a refresh on the engine perhaps, or perhaps to a Honda? Um, as soon as I get rid of the Briggs, I will purchase one. So, so there's some people obviously saying they don't like the Briggs. What, what's what's the story on the Briggs from the Kawasaki? No, good question. So, um, story. Uh, the Kawasaki was not emissioned correctly with EPA for all for California. It's okay. Really cut and dry. So it wasn't uh, when we first brought them into the states. They we didn't they didn't realize back in 2017 that they weren't ready to go be sold at the Kawasaki in California. The Briggs was. We looked at the Honda and um, we were still really early on. We made that decision to go to the Briggs, uh, but the Honda GC had the muffler in the front and that's what Swordman looked at. Uh -huh. And the challenge with that is that when you have an enclosed grass catcher, having a muffler in the front is just a, an opportunity for disaster and somebody burning themselves. Sure. They didn't look at the GX um, and I hope that's something that we'll be looking at in the future, but the Briggs has been working really well for us. I got to be honest. I haven't had issues with the Briggs and they've been out there for about three years. It's a common motor, easy to get parts, 
used in a lot of applications. Love the GX, love the Honda, um, but we haven't had any issues with it. And you'd be amazed at how quiet the actual motor is on that Briggs. Um, it's used on many of the real motors, but in the near future, um, we are in discussions about the GX um, to see if that's an option, but I don't have anything concrete that I can walk away with and say on this date. I would hope maybe by 2022, if we did do it, it'd be 2022, not this year. I know that. Gotcha. Yeah. And I will say this one, one thing I will say that when I cut with the Swordman last year, compared to the True Cut, like the, um, the GX is like a battle. It's like a tank, man. That thing is like built like a tank. When you start it up, like the entire neighborhood knows it starts every time, but it's loud. It's a loud engine. The Briggs on the Swordman, it was quite, it's, it's definitely, if I had to rate them, I mean, the, the Greens Master, you can barely hear it running. It almost sounds like it's broken. And then that Briggs is actually, I was surprised at how quiet it was. And then the, the GX, which is a great engine, but it's a lot louder. So if you want to be friends with your neighbors, the GX, the True Cut, you're going to want to, you know, wait till, you know, nine in the morning before you crank that bad boy up. I mean, it's not one you can really mow. Um, you know, super early if you're really trying to be considerate to your neighbor. So that's one thing to uh, to look at too. And hey Ron, uh, the other thing, the other thing about that, just so you know, is uh, something to consider is when you think about again the relief ground reel mowers, you have mm -hmm. a constant force of that reel scraping across that bed knife and creating a lot of friction, requiring a lot of torque. Right. When you have a zero touch reel like the Swerman has, where you are very, I mean, virtually not even touching the bed knife it doesn't take a lot of power. I mean, I you, you know, when you came out here, you can run, we run the Swordman's at about half throttle. You don't need a lot of power to run a real mower unless you have a lot of friction. And unless right. you're scraping across a bed knife consistently, you really don't need a lot of power. That's why manual real mowers are a possibility. You're using That's good point. just manpower. That's you know, you can't, you've never seen a manpowered rotary mower. They don't exist. Mm, no. It's because yeah, it I... takes too much. They beat the grass with just sheer power and force. If you have a real fine-tuned reel mower just dialed in, you really don't need that much power to run one. Gotcha. That's a good, that's a good point. That's a really, really good point. And and uh, at that point, moving on to like uh, your groove roller for Alette. So Super TA wants to send you some money. He says, uh, you know, I'm your first person to ask about the groove roller. Says there'll be many more Alette gains in the market share. Is your first customer? Where should I send payments? So there you go. You got someone that's looking for looking for the prototype. <laughs> Uh, for the uh, what size mower does he have? We'll run some dimensions. We'll get him one and see how it goes. Yeah, yeah. You have to, I mean uh, that too. Yeah, super TA. So, so chime in. Let us know how how wide your OLED is, and uh, you know, you never know. Uh, Lee might be able to work something out uh, for you. Yeah, and Kent Carson. Yeah, thank you, thank you, Kent. Um, it's a Foley. Yeah, the Foley type grinder is the one you need for removing the cone out of the reel. So, if you're taking your mower to a shop, like if you and they're going to sharpen it, ask them if they have a Foley type grinder. That's that's the one of the uh, at least for Toros anyway. That's the one that's recommended by Toro for grinding the reels because it's the one that can take any kind of coning out. So. Thanks, Ken. I appreciate it. Oh, see, this thing, always the comment section to, to bail me out when I need it. So I really, really appreciate you guys. And then Nick here, Nick sees chiming in. He says, coning can be caused by not setting the high to cut the same on both sides. If one is off a little bit, it'll wear on one side of the bed knife than the other. I could see that. I could see how if you had, it was kind of canted slightly, you can create more wear on one side than the other. Can definitely, um, I can definitely, definitely see that. Uh, Brian saying a 26 inch is going to require a glass flat lawn and um, coning is caused by improper adjustments. So Lee, question for you, as we're, as we're moving through the comments here, so one thing we were talking about, one of the questions I always get is, what is the best reel mower? And, and you know, we were talking about, um, one of the points I always make is about like a uh, drive system, right? Like the drive system between them, like I really like the drive system on the, on the, the Swordman, I like it on the Greens Master because it has that drum style roller. I think we have a picture here of the rear different drive systems of the different mowers I can pull up here. Yeah, so, if we talk through these, Lee, do you want to go through them, like what each one of these is and, and your, your thoughts on each one? Um, yeah, from, for those, of, many of y'all probably know, but left to right, you've got a California trimmer, you've got the McLean, you've got a True Cut 27, looks like a True Cut 20, right. and then on the right's a Swordman. Um, you know, a real mower in general uh, is obviously going to make a tremendous cut. So it's really tough to say one can cut better than the other. I think a lot of it has to do with its age, uh, how much reel is left on it, how much bed knife is left on it. Mm -hmm. uh, they're all going to cut really similar. I think, in my opinion, what differentiates them is, you know, their handling um, and also how you can get them serviced and things like that. So a lot of people call and ask, you know, what's the best reel mower for me? Or what, what do you think the best reel mower is? And in my opinion, first, it's a reel mower. That's step one. Sure, you know, right. Any reel mower, you're winning the It's game. a good mower. So yeah. there's no poo-pooing any kind of reel mower. They're all great. 
but when it comes to which one, it really depends on a couple of factors for that particular person. Um, although we sell two of the real mowers, in the reality, we're happy with anyone buying any real mower. We sell the rollers for the McLean, the trimmer, and the true cut. So, you know, it's kind of a win across the board. So we don't really cherry pick one or the other. But that being said, you know, some qualifiers would be, do you live near a shop that can actually sharpen the reel? That would probably be my number one qualifier. Right. You know, if you're in Colorado and there may not be a real mower shop for four or five hours, you're kind of limited on what you can purchase. Um, you're down to somebody that either can find a golf course or a company that can sharpen your reel by mail. Um, it's kind of easy to qualify. You don't have a lot of options. Um, if you do live near a place that can sharpen your reel, my next big question would be, do you have a lot of hills? You know, certain mowers climb hills better than others. Yep. If you don't have a lot of hills or you do, I think a true cut by far is the best hill climbing machine out there. Yeah. Uh, you can see by the tread on those tires and their thumb response, as far as the way the ground propulsion goes mm -hmm. by far out of experience, they can climb anything. Um, the downside is they do leave tire marks. Sure. So, you know, if you ever drive past a, a commercial property going down a highway or down a you know a major freeway, or whatever, and you see that zero turn that keeps going over the same spot, over and over again you start to see those tire marks right so that's one of the downsides of a true cut and a mclean and a uh a trimmer for that matter because they have those tires that are on putting the pressure out and then the last thing in my personal preference is i like the ability to control my speed um both the swordman and the true cuts and that's why i've always liked them because of my particular yard you can feather the ground speed with the mclean and the trimmer um, and I think a lot of the greens mowers, once you drop the ground engagement, your only real commitment is keeping up with the mower or changing your throttle. Sure. And you always have one hand off the mower. You're constantly up, down, up, down. The other mowers, to me, it's more convenient to be able to have both hands on the, on the handlebars. I can see that. throttle it slowly around beds or quickly up hills. Um, so that's kind of the difference as I try to qualify people through is, and if you're flat and you're near a real more company that can sharpen reels, man, you got all the options. Right. Any of the five are great. Yeah, and, and as far as the drive systems goes, I always tell people that the, the drive system on the trimmer um, and the McLean, they're, they're a little bit different as far as that little wheel in the back. I think we got a video of that kind of showing how that works in comparison to like the drum style that's on the Swordman and a Greens mower. I can show you that here really quick if I can bring it up. Let's see if technology will not fail me. Yeah, so here is a, is a quick video showing like this is them on the turf park, and you see them them starting up. You see how the how the the, the propulsion wheel is in the back there, and then I guess to get you propel it, lead you have to drop it down to have it to have it engage with the turf. Is what happens? Yeah, the t it's I mean it's a smart design in the sense that the reel and the ground propulsion are in tune. They're on the same gear ratio, so you can't engage the rear wheel or the drive mechanism unless your reel is engaged. Okay. So you're in you're guaranteed to get that perfect cut um because it's timed in and tuned in with your speed on the ground but you know it's really tough to see that to the naked eye sure. um, that exact cut and that ground propulsion usually if people see that in their grass it's because their blades getting dull not because of the speed of the ground and the speed of the reel right i've just always the, the one watch out is that back wheel is spinning you can't tip the mower back at all even when the wheel's up because when you do it tends to grab the ground. And like I mentioned, I have a hilly front yard and a really flat backyard. And for me, I found it a little more challenging to try to turn because our tendency is to, when you turn, is to dip the dip the back end up and the front end, or back end down, the front end up. And if that wheel catches, it kind of catches you off guard. You really got to get used to it. I so got I just you. Prefer, I prefer personally just to be able to have both hands on the handlebars and control the speed and still be able to freewheel because that's a great advantage of the McLean and trimmer. Yep. When that wheel's up, they roll really nice um, when you want to get close to some corners or some edges, really easy um, to get in and out of those things. Um, the true cut's a little harder to push because it's a lot heavier machine. Yep. The Swordman, it freewheels very easily if you need to, but the true cut's a little bit harder because of the clutch and the chains. Um, it's a little bit more difficult to just freewheel compared to the McLean and trimmer. Yep. And, and there, there is no, there's no pushing a greens mower. It's like, it's, it's, you know, yeah. it's, it's engaged or it's not engaged. It's, you know, it's a precision, you know, precision piece of cutting equipment. There's no, uh, there's no engaging the reel and, and manually choose moving it around like a, like a regular mower, unfortunately. So, 
Why do you get the best cut out of anything on the market? I mean, that is a greens mower. That is hands true. Hands down, stays engaged, and you. I mean, it is what it is. It's a, it's awesome. Um, yeah, the, a little the, bit the tougher to maneuver. The first time I, I I cut with mine, I literally started laughing. Like I I, I made. A pass down, a pass back, and I stop. I shut the more off. I looked at it, and I just started laughing. I'm like, it can actually get. I mean, I because I'm thinking the true cuts is the, the end all be all of all mowers, and I was like, man, it really can get that much better. So awesome. <laughs> <laughs> so Chris, uh, so a question here from Chris uh, Martelli says, hey Lee, how's the um, prototype experiment with the Honda GX Swordman? That's a really interesting project. So you kind of covered some of that already, but I'm not sure if you want to chime think in Chris anymore. Chris volunteered to be my first swap out, actually. Yeah, yeah. So I'm sure he'll he came be in to touch. The shop and was like, hey, if you get the GX, we'll. We'll test it on my swordman. So um, definitely have plans to do it. Very, very cool. Cool. Let me take care of a couple of super chats here we have from Papa Mo's Low. Super chat received. I appreciate it. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Again, yeah. The, the, the appreciating me and also thanking Lee for coming on the live stream. And definitely do this. Is, I can't tell you how awesome it is to have you on here to answer all these real mower questions. I mean, you're like a wealth of knowledge on all real mowers. So it's really good <laughs> to, to have you on. Awesome. And then um, uh, K says, uh, thanks super again. I appreciate received. it. And then also finally, Travis, received. you're very, very welcome, man. We appreciate you coming in to hang out and watch, you know, because if there's no one watching, it would be, um, there'd be no one for us to be out here talking to. So let's see uh, what other questions we have here. Uh, so I guess someone just really wants to mower badly. They're saying, Stuart McLean says, he says, is the delay to ship the Edwin 18 and 22 the same? Um, No, not right now. Uh, right now, uh, it looks like the 18, we have... Oh, I'm gonna regret saying this. I got <laughs> no. We have about three uh, Edwin 18 inches actually on the shelves right now. That is not, not anymore. <laughs> um, yeah, the, the 22s go a lot faster, um, just because it's more of a standard size mm -hmm. and you know the size of a rotary mower. So it's really something that applies to a lot of folks. Um, the 22s right now we're at six to eight weeks. March 5th uh, is my next container. I think I have five available that I haven't sold, but I do have some. Some 18 inches that are sitting on the shelves waiting for, I think it's a dark red, a dark blue, and two dark blues. One dark red and two dark blues are sitting on the shelf right now. Nice. So there you go. So call up Monday morning bright and early before they're out, before they're all gone. Awesome. Great question. Are definitely more available usually. Nice. Nice. Uh, shout out to you, Lee, here from Mission Road Turf. Uh, thanks, to, thanks for all you do, Lee, and the team. Can't wait to get my new Swordman Groove Roller. Rocky from yeah. Dallas. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. So it's a good question here about McLean 25 and the true cut. He says, bought a new 25 inch McLean at the end of last summer. My question is, should I put it up for sale and go with a used 25 inch true cut? <laughs> and is there that much of a difference? Oh, that's a hard, that's a tough one. You want, you want to? No, I don't think. No, no. Yeah. I yeah just from a value perspective. I mean, you've got a brand new, great mower, um, you know, year 10. I think with a little bit more time mowing with it, you may make that move. You may not. I, I couldn't say yes to that. No, I couldn't trade in a brand new mower for any used mower financially. It just doesn't seem to make sense. Um, unless the only thing I would say, unless you have some monstrous big hill in your front yard or backyard that you can't climb with the McLean or any real mower, then if you're not mowing with it, then I would look for something. But I think you got a great deal on the McLean 25. It's a great mower. Uh, they're all great mowers. Sure. Great. Great answer. Uh, question from Kenneth Hughes. Will you ever make rare rollers for McLean? I'm not sure how easy that would be to do. Uh, yeah, but actually that was looked at about five or six years ago. Um, your feet get in the way. That's okay. just the reality of it. You, okay. you kick it. There's no real easy way to make it where you don't kick it. Sure. Okay. Very cool. So Godfrey has a question about leveling lawn. It's something that, that is very dear and dear to my heart. He says, something about leveling my yard and one, uh, does sandbags at the big box store do the job? And two, should I mix topsoil in with the sand? So it depends on the sand you're talking about. I'm I'm not a fan of doing large amounts of leveling, Godfrey, with play sand. Um, you really want something a little coarser, like masonry sand. Um, that that's that's usually a better a better um, medium for it. River, um, we call it river river sand, but also masonry sand. Something more coarse is better. You can mix topsoil with it. Um, that can work. It's a, probably a bit more of an, um, but that's 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 a, a decent way of, of going about it. The the blend that I like is like a 70-30 mix if you're gonna do that because you you have enough um sand that the leveling work, all this all this work that you're doing to putting to level the lawn, that's gonna last. And but you're still also introducing some organic material. Alternatively, what you could do is you could um do what we did with Alex's lawn and my lawn the second time last year, and that is level with a hundred percent. Sand, but here's the thing. Here's the caveat. I want to, um, to, to qualify that first. 
is after we aerated the lawn, we introduced, we had like um, some, some carbon products from Miramichi Green that we put down, some granular, a really good granular product to introduce some organic material, and then we leveled with sand. So we still introduced organic material um, as part of the top dressing process. We just did it separately from the top dressing mix. It, uh, the, the benefit to doing that is you're a lot less likely to introduce weeds into the lawn um, <laughs> than, as you would with topsoil. So there's something to consider uh, you know, if you if you decide to go that route, I mean, either way, you'll get a great result. But if you can go the slightly more expensive route of of, of using like um, you know a compost carbon based product, something that's rich um, and usually a little bit cleaner, less chances for weeds by doing that 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 method. But Lee, any any thoughts on that one? I was just smiling, thinking about man, I'd love to pay the sand man. Um, <laughs> <laughs> there's nothing fun about sanding and uh, leveling your yard. I mean, it's, yeah. it makes a huge difference, but it's work. It is work. Yeah, yeah, you're right. I mean, the, the only thing I will say, if you can rent some equipment to do it, it makes a top dressing machine in, and a dingo to load it, it makes life a lot easier, but it's still, you still gotta get that leveling rake out or drag mat. It's it's still backbreaking work. It's 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 up there. It's like doing an aeration all day. It's ter it's like, yeah. it's really, you do so, have buddies with you when you do it. Make it a project with like a bunch of people. You don't wanna do it by yourself. I, I don't think it would be smart to try leveling your lawn by yourself. That, that's, a, that's, that's gonna be kind of rough. I think, all right. Hey, Ron, this brings up a good point. A question I get all, I mean, all the okay. time. Um, folks will call or email us and say, you know, I really want to get into real mowing. I want to start keeping up my yard. I want to start using a real mower, mm -hmm. but I haven't sanded or leveled my yard yet. Right. I'm going to wait till I do this. And I think it's, a, uh, to me personally, again, my opinion, I think it's a little bit of a mis, misclaim, I guess you could say, misnomer. Um, if you go from a rotary mower to a real mower, you know, you're taking a canopy of grass from about two to four inches and you're bringing it down to about a half inch or three quarters of an inch. Mm -hmm. And just by going to a real mower, number one, you're not going to scalp like you would traditionally think you were doing with a rotary mower. Sure. Um, number one, you know, if you do absolutely zero to your turf as far as uh, leveling it, a real mower will allow you to cut down almost any yard you can get down to three quarters of an inch without any intervention. I mean, it's just the reality of it. And that's because you have so many, number one, the front to back space is about 12 to 18 inches, depending on the mower. Mm -hmm. And then you've got these rear drums, front rollers, wheels. Uh, the contact points are a hundred fold to that of a rotary mower, which has four wheels, each with one inch of contact, you know? Mm -hmm. So that thing's bopping around on an uneven yard, creating scalp marks easily versus a real mower. The other part of this that I don't think people, you know, maybe consider is as you bring your turf down, you're bringing the canopy down and your real mower is going to begin to actually roll on top of the turf, not sink through the turf and onto the soil. So what you find and what I recommend to everybody is start real mowing, you know, start at three quarters of an inch, mow for an entire season. Don't put yourself through the pain of, leveling and sanding right before you get a real mower. Go ahead and right. mow for an entire season. Let that grass get thick, dense, and then reevaluate. Because a lot of times you'll find that those nice hills and contours of the ground make the yard look really nice. Um, and as you continue to make that turf dense and thick, some of these undulations in your soil really become irrelevant. Right. So I think some people go too far too soon. And a lot of these imperfections can be fixed with real mowing in the turf canopy coming down to create that carpet like a berber and you really are riding on the grass not the soil gotcha yeah great points great points awesome so a question here from from brent barker or baker sorry he says i've been told that turning a baseball field drag mat 90 degrees it becomes rigid and doesn't follow the areas to be filled i've never tried that brent um i'm not sure if you know about that leave as far as like a baseball drag mat yeah i'm not i don't yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure about that one. Yeah, Roger Sylvester says, thanks for the answer. It's more like 10,000 square feet. Age makes it feels like more <laughs> as far as that. Yeah, 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 I could see that. Yeah. So um, she says a question about maintenance. She's uh, in process of maintenance on a McLean, changing the oil, new belt, and plug. Question, still cuts paper. Should I back lap anyway? No, yeah. I don't see any reason why. Yeah, I wouldn't. If you're still I, cutting paper, you're in a great place. Yeah, I wouldn't. I mean, if you're if you're not if you're not um, if you're not taking you know if it's not if it's still cutting properly, there's no reason to go and cut material off. You just you just basically shortening the life of the reel, shortening the life of the bed knife. No reason to uh, to do that. 
Uh, let's see what other what other points here. Um, Joseph Roberts says he's mowing 8,800 square feet first year cutting with a real 25 inch McLean last year. Got 75 cuts in with my Honda. That's nice, man. Good job. Out of Tulsa, uh, in Oklahoma. So, so we have, I think you have a special request here from Chris Martell. Always, Chris, always the Georgia fans. He's, he's like, on. can I get a Georgia Power G on my grass catcher? <laughs> yes, yes. We got a sign shop down the street. He'd love to get some more work. Yep. So it looks like it looks like you can be uh, be that yeah, can be done. So a, a question about the um, the, <laughs> the 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 turf park, uh, Scott uh, Elise says, are you going to be burning any of the turf uh, at the park this spring? I think Scott saw what we did. Maybe Scott saw what we did last year at our other building. Uh, we burnt, <laughs> you know. Technically, uh, I don't know if anyone saw, but last year we did that kind of experiment. We uh, scalped one section of this commercial turf. We burned one section of the commercial turf, and we did nothing to the other piece. Okay. And the burn, it came out of dormancy way faster and was way greener. Um, it's definitely the way to go. But if you have pets or dogs, your your significant other or yourself isn't going to appreciate those black marks going across the carpet. Uh, we may do some here. I, I got the room to do it. I don't see anybody that's going to catch me. So maybe for fun, we'll burn half of it. It's always fun just to see that nice. It's such a slow, creeping, very low, almost almost out fire. Um, and the results are amazing. I, and you don't got to put all that dormant grass somewhere. That's right. the toughest part. That that you know that's you you say that that's one of the worst parts about scalping. Like I started I started like my my pre scalp already because I'm I'm trying to go at half an inch this season. We'll see if I'm able to pull it off. It's kind of a big ask. Um, so I started I started taking some material out of my turf already. Not quite to the point where the the turf's gonna wake up or you know get down to the to the, like my full scalp I'm gonna do next month. Um, but you're right. Like burning your lawn gets rid of one of the most one of the most headachey parts of scalping, which is if you have, like, I've got 12,000 square feet, dude, like getting, like hauling off all that material is a huge pain. So like, but the thing is I can't burn my lawn here, but like the neighborhood that's, it's, I'm, I haven't checked, but I'm, I'm almost positive it's against the house association rules. Yeah. I would, I would, I would get the wrong kind of attention if I did that. So I think so. Yep. Yep. So question about, um, backlapping, uh, he says, Hey, what's up, Ron? Just bought my commercial grade California trimmer late August. Use it only about 10 times. Will the backlap be okay after the scalp? Or should I send it in to be sharpened? What say you, Lee? That's tough. Um, here's the challenge when you when you scalp. No, number one, um, I'm trying to think how to answer this best. When you're cutting dormant grass, it has zero moisture, absolutely none, compared to green grass that's growing. And that green grass is actually what lubricates the reel and the bed knife of when you're mowing. So when you scalp it, it puts a lot of stress on the reel. Number one, it heats it. Number two, everything expands. It's metal things get tighter and that's why a lot of times you try to wait till you have a dull reel um uh, you know dull reel in comparison you don't want a brand new sharp reel if you can avoid it when you do that because it is going to heat up it is going to expand it is going to put a little extra life on it compared to cutting green lubricated grass um i think the real indicator is going to be what it does when the grass turns green i wouldn't go out of your way to do it on the front end you probably are going to have to um but you know, we talked earlier about what's an indicator for me to sharpen my reel or not. Something I forgot to mention is, you know, if you wait two or three days and you look across your yard and you see a brown haze yep. across a beautifully green turf, you know it's time. Mm -hmm. uh, there's no given rule to this stuff. It's just kind of averages, I think. So you see that brown haze on the top of your, from the lawn tips being torn versus being cleanly cut. I think that's going to be your indicator. You need to do something. So I sure. can't answer it straightforward. Yeah, but yeah, so it kind of gives you a, some some thinking points there, Gabriel. Um, but yeah, great great uh, answer there, Lee. So Brian Laura has an interesting question. I'm not sure about this one. He says, do the different real cartridges have different geometries, bed knife, um, edge behind center for their intended heights of cut? Um, so he, I think he's talking about like the, so on, I know on greens mowers, there is a set, there is a, um, I forget the actual term, but like the 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 distance or the, or the, the, the number of degrees the bed knife is set behind the behind like what would be the center point from the like the the the, the, the of the reel. Um, I like, guess is that different on um, on the cartridge. I know with the real with greens mowers that is a thing that you can adjust. Um, but I don't know if on greens mower or on the the cartridge systems you guys have that kind of adjustment, or if it's all the same. There's not. Um, okay. They're actually set equally the same, and you know that it's not a greens mower. It's kind of that all-purpose mower. The swordman is. That right. hybrid in between one or not, but no, the, the ten blade and the six blade, the bed knife set is identical. Gotcha. 
So this is an easy one, softball one from LG. Uh, thanks, LG, not for the super difficult questions tonight. He says, is there a weight difference between the electric and gas model? There is, actually. Uh, the gas model weighs about 125 pounds. The electric is uh, about 140 pounds. That's the 22-inch. So electric's actually a little bit heavier. Right, because the okay, because the motors and battery, I guess, is what, what adds it. Yeah, adds to it. Cool. All right, cool. So question here from Helmet Ruckus. He says, hey, I ordered my Alit with the 10 blade reel and received the six as well because it comes with the unit. Is it, this, is it the same with the Swordman or will I have to spend extra? That's a good question. Um, no, we, the way we price the mowers is that we actually just sell the mowing unit and then you can a la carte anything you want to add to it. Sure. And we do that because some customers have purchased multiple Swordman's for their properties or a different property. And they've already got two or three reels or certain cartridges. Okay. I just want people to be obligated to buy something that they don't need. Okay. So you buy what you need. Gotcha. Very, very, very nice. Good question. Yep. Yep. Great one. And as Christina says that, and I agree with her, she says the beauty of the Swordman is having the cartridge options. That's why I bought one. And that's what I said too. Like, you know, one of the questions I always get um, as far as like which reel mower, I say, you know, if the first foremost question, kind of the same way, the same answer that Lee had is whatever you can get service in your area, that's the primary criteria of what you should buy. But, um, you know, before I actually used the Swordman, when I came out to you guys uh, last year and used one, um, it, again, it cuts nice, man. I mean, if I, I always say, like, if I had to, to, to rate them, like, the True Cut, the McLean's and, the, and those in there are, are in one class. The True Cut cuts really good. The Swordman is definitely a cut above what a True Cut does, in my opinion. And then after that, you got to spend a lot more money um, and, and to get into a greens more. And the fact that you have the interchangeable cartridge system is a pretty, it's a pretty cool value proposition that even though you're spending probably a little bit more than the true cut, you know, you're getting a lot of different machines. So that's, that's, I, I totally get what you're saying there, Christina. I, I definitely agree on, um, you know, the swordman being, you know, if you have, if you have to have one more to rule them all, that's, it's hard to, to kind of not give that one a good look, you know? Um, okay, so a question for you about, about pricing or uh, the cheapest swordman. Uh, Lonzo Learner says, Ron is a man. I was out with the family. I'll definitely watch the recording. Yep, no problem. He says, what is the cheapest swordman? Like, how look, well, how, could, how cheap can you get into a swordman? Um, you know, I think you're right around 25. I think it's right around 2,500 with the reel and the mower for 18 inch. Right around okay. $2,500. Okay. Um, you're looking, it's right in line with the let, let's are, you know, a couple hundred bucks more, to be honest with you, when you put a cartridge to it. Um, but they're in the same ballpark. And then you're looking at, I was just looking at a, a tool I put together to compare the prices. Um, you look at the trimmer, the true cut and the McLean's you're running about 500 to $700 less. Got you. Then a swordman. Okay. I'm sorry. Then a swordman. Cool. Very, very cool. All right. Um, question about education. Did you guys go to college? Uh, yeah, for, yeah, for a while. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Graduated. Did, yeah. I did my time. Yeah. Did your time. Right. So next question. Thanks for um, asking though. <laughs> yeah, yeah, great question, Mauricio. Um, uh, Donnell Burrell says, "Hey guys, Alabama's in the house. Advice on a first room or a medium yard, five thousand square feet on an uneven lawn." Um, uneven or hilly? That's yeah, you have to give us a little thing, bit more on that. Um, but it, it, again, you know, it comes back to where you can sharpen it. And you can't go wrong with a great trimmer, uh, a McLean, a True Cut. You can't go wrong, especially if you're starting off. Folks that call. Great start off mower, something you can find on Craigslist or Facebook and just get into it and see if that's your thing. You know, sure. are you really going to enjoy it? Will you really go out there twice a week? You know, yep. no reason to spend $3,000, $2,500, $2,000, and all of a sudden not love it. You got to love it. So I always say my first mower was a $250 uh, McLean that was built in like 1943. It was, I mean, it was, it was only I could afford. And I fell in love with real mowing from there. I mean, it was just, I knew I wanted to do it and I wanted to invest my time in it. So start where you want and then kind of go from there. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Great question, Donnell. But uh, the, cho the answer is like grab, get one and, and run with it. You're going you're gonna to love yeah. the way your lawn looks with any of them. Um, do you have a way to illustrate the, the difference in noise levels, levels between the gas and electric and the models? I'm not sure if you guys have any recordings illustrate. or anything like that. Well, they're, they're decibel rated, actually. Swerman puts a sticker on the back of them. Um, the electric runs at a 67 decibel level and the uh edwin runs at a 93 or 94 i can't remember off the top of my head mm -hmm. um there's no way to really compare that to something i think if you go online you can look at what things make different noises but i, I don't have a way to illustrate that i could yell at y'all i guess <laughs> yeah cool good 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 cool question no, it's tough to do cool i think and pat was saying he 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 likes the briggs he's, he's i've been impressed with the briggs of my swordman i have never uh never hears a mower that runs so quiet 
I also have a Honda Rotary, and it's much louder than the Swordman. I, I agree that the the Briggs on the Swordman is noticeably quiet. That's the first thing I noticed when last year when when I was mowing, I was like, man, this thing is actually pretty quiet. The 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 True Cut is again the Honda's a good engine, but man, it's it, again it's like it's like starting up a tank, man. It's 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 uh it's uh it's really really loud. Um, so question from Brian. He says he has like a shake or something with his with his Swordman. He says my Swordman shakes and rattles. When it's running at more than half power, I know it can be running at half or less, but I feel like there's something so wrong with it. Maybe something out of balance? I don't know. Any yeah, ideas? I mean, Brian, it could be a couple of things, but I mean, the only thing I can think of right now because the grass catcher rattling, there's some rubber rings on the front of a swordman. I think they cost like 50 cents each. That keeps the grass catcher on these rubber rings, and if those have worn out or fallen off, now you're just metal on metal, and that makes a lot of noise, I could think. Um, it could be a multitude of things, but... Give us a call and we can diagnose it. With anything, it's really not a complicated machine. You know, you could almost feel to pinpoint at least where it is, and then we could probably help you out. Just don't know what it is. Cool. Very cool. And as far as that question we had about the Liberty for the grooved roller, he said his is a 17 inch. So that there you go. That's your, you know, if you're going to have a 17 groove. inch in the shop. So we'll measure out the specs and uh, Super TA, I'll get your contact information or you can shoot us an email. We'll do it for fun just to see how it goes. Yeah, yeah. So just reach out to the guys uh, here at realrollers.com um, or shoot me an email and I can I can get your contact information to, to Lee if you need to, if need be. Um, there's my email. But yeah, just reach out to the guys at Real Rollers and just say, hey, I'm Super TA from the chat and they will take care of you. Awesome, awesome, awesome question. Um, it's a good question here from, from, from KC. She says, what's the difference between backlapping and sharpening, if anything? That's a good question. So... So sharpening, you're actually putting a brand new edge. We talked about this a little bit earlier, that triangle. Mm -hmm. You're actually taking something that's become rounded and you're giving it a brand new, I call it triangle, but it's on the actual reel, not the bed knife. Bed knife, in either way, you're going to straighten up with a, uh, by smoothing it out. Sorry, mm -hmm. you're going to face it. But with the reel, uh, sharpening is going to go ahead and put a brand new triangle on it. And what that means is your reel spins forward. So that triangle is going to be straight on the back end of that real, real blade and then at an angle on the front. When you actually back lap, you're taking a rounded tip because it's been worn out and you're actually cutting back across it the opposite way by spinning the reel backwards. And what results is a new kind of triangle versus a or triangle tip that gives you a new cutting edge when you spin it forward. Gotcha. So you so can usually back lap three to four times before you need to do a relief. Okay, so there, so there is a difference, Casey's. Cool, cool. Uh, Lee, what kind of turnaround time is there on sending sharpening blades in to Swordman? It says, uh, yeah, what's the question from around the house of Pat? Um, great, I guess it depends uh, so on, uh, the, on back lap. Yeah, it depends on the, uh, the uh, time. So, you know, UPS has got who we use. It's anywhere from three days to one day nowadays, but we keep them for 72 hours or less and flip them back out. So Very it really cool. depends on how far you ship and where the weekends fall. Gotcha. 72 hours is our max to keep them um, got a good partnership going. We'll return them and get them out of there right away. Very, very cool. Yep. And a question here about touching up the rollers. He says, uh, Lee, Matt G says, I bought a roller from you last year. Was was uh, curious. Do you recommend touch up painting it each year? It, it depends. You know, if you're running it over concrete, it's just going to come off again on the smooth rollers or powder coated black. Um, I wouldn't recommend it. I think one of the cool things is as you get a little bit of texture on the front roller it's kind of like the rear drum on a swordman it mm -hmm. actually gives you a little more bite sure sure oh this this is this is a fun question so what and we'll, we'll hear what different everyone's everyone's take is how lee does i know how i do my my passes this is what what are your recommendations on mowing straight lines with a real mower okay so for me the way i the way i tackle this is i i pick a point like i mean i've i've mowed enough lines in my lawn that i, I kind of know how to do this but on a, on a on a fresh lawn if i were not um the one i didn't wasn't familiar with what I do is I pick out a point in the distance and I walk to that. Because if you try and think, at most lawns, even though you think they're square or rectangular shape, they really aren't. So if you're trying to um, just walk in a straight line, that's, that's not always necessarily the, the, the best way to get a, a straight starting line. So I will set the mower up, I'll look at a point or a line in the, like something in the distance, and I'll walk straight to that. And then when I turn around, I can simply just use that that starter line as a as a guide to 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 lay out my my other line. So that's that's how I do it. Um, also, I've got like some stripes burned into my lawn pretty good. So as far as knowing where to where to go, it's pretty it's easier at this point. But for me, just picking a point and walking to that is a good option. Lee, I'm not sure if you got any other tricks for getting straight lines. 
I think it just depends on the yard. You know, my, my front yard, I follow my sidewalk. I actually don't make straight lines. Mine are curved the entire way because my the way my house positions up front. So I keep them straight from one row to the next as far as, you know, my, my how I cover over the next stripe. But uh, my backyard, I just set a point, like you said, shoot straight across and then try to make up for where I mess up. But uh, <laughs> sure. know, it's better than nothing. I try my best. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. Yeah. Awesome. All right. So super chat from uh, Mission Road Turf. Thank you so much, super sir. Chat I appreciate all you do for the community, Ron. Keep up the amazing work. And uh, Rocky from Dallas. And no, thank, thank you guys for watching. And thanks. You know, it, it's only possible because of you guys watching and also great, um, you know, collaborations and help from from people like uh, Real Rollers and Lee coming on, and, you know, um, dropping knowledge on on mowers and stuff. He's, he's learned. He knows more about real mowers than I've, I've ever or he's forgotten more about real mowers than, I, than I'll probably ever know. So it's uh, always yeah. nice to have, um, you know, the people from the community, the experts to come in and, and help out. But I, I really appreciate that, Mission Turpin. I appreciate you uh, watching. So Frederick Duke says, I was hesitant to purchase my Edmund 2.1 because of the engine uh, coming from a C27 with a Honda engine. But Eric notified me the Edmund shipped the other day and I can't wait. Is the Briggs good? Yeah, I, I think so. I mean, here's the thing. I mean, Lee will, will speak to this, but ha having listened to it and mowed with it, it sounds, it seems fine to me. I mean, the one thing with Briggs and Stratton, they build a ton of engines. I mean, Honda builds a ton of engines, but, but I mean, there's Briggs and Stratton are all over the place, literally, right? So, um, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I think they're fine. Lee, I mean, as far as you guys, any issues really per se that you guys have had out of them or? No, no issues with the Briggs. Like I said, we really haven't had them. Uh, Frederick, I've seen your name. You know, you've been waiting for a mower for a little while and I just, you know, it's cool to see actually a face with a name, but I have so many names in my head. Yeah. I came from a C27 to the Swordman. I never had any intentions of selling lawnmowers. You know, that just, um, people know my story. This isn't my primary job. Um, you know, this, it was my passion. So the fact that I loved my C27, it was, uh, the true cut was, it was amazing. I didn't think it'd get any better. Um, but it's kind of like going from a Blackberry to an iPhone. Uh, I didn't know what I didn't know. I, right. I thought I needed a keyboard. I thought apps were for other people. I didn't need apps. As soon as I had an iPhone, I was so mad that I waited so long. Um, it was the same experience with Swordman. They told me, they asked us if we were interested in selling lawnmowers. And I was like, no, we're not interested. In, we're happy with our little roller world. Um, they left me one. And it took about two weeks for me to actually go out and try it. And it was after about three or four minutes, I was like, oh, this is just nothing like I've ever mowed with before. It's such a cool feeling. And I told my wife later that night, I was like, I don't know. We're going to have to get into this. It's, it's just too cool. If everybody feels the way I feel, it's going to change the way people real mode. It's sure. easy. Sure. Awesome. Awesome. Awesome answer. Uh, so Kent Carson, Kent, you're going to have to let me know what your background is, man. I think, I think, I, I kind of think we have a golf industry person here. He says that he says that peat moss is an excellent additive to sand. So there you go. That's another option for adding some organic material to sand. Uh, Cause Ken is dropping all kinds of top dressing and obscure real more knowledge. You know, you, you had some of the lurkers in, in the, in the live stream, man, you got some experts in here. They're just, they're just kind of hanging out. All right. So Ken also says is when, when you're top dressing the yard, make sure everybody knows to use a rotary mower um, ontology, the sand about gone, or you'll need to resharpen the reel for sure. Uh, I guess you, yeah, I guess you mean to like, use the rotary mower for all the nasty work as far as, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You have to resharpen afterwards. Um, Awesome. Oh yeah, this is this is a great question. It's something I'm interested in, Helmet Ruckus. Thanks for asking this question. So the brush cartridge for the swordman. <clears throat> I'd like to hear your input about the the brush cartridge for for top dressing. Any any thoughts on that? You know when it's used it? I think you know it doesn't level out necessarily like a rake would. Um, what it does is kind of works it into this into the grass. Mm -hmm. um, you know, one of the things that can really choke out your yard is if the grass tips aren't still exposed. A cardinal rule. Um, something I learned the hard way, uh, you want to try to cut your grass short before you sand, but you really shouldn't. Like mentally, you think that's a good idea. So right. you can like really see how level you're making everything. Mm -hmm. But the truth of the matter is one of the few times you really want to let your grass grow longer because you need the grass blades to stay exposed to the sun. If you cover an entire area and bury the grass blades, it's going to kill it. And it's going to require the grass to creep back over it to cover that spot up. And uh, you can ask my wife about this. I made the fatal mistake by sanding in like late July and I mm -hmm. went way too deep and we had a spot in my front yard that never grew back until the next season, all winter long. So to answer your point, one of the greatest things about the rotary brush, it'll help work that sand below the grass blade level so that it stays exposed to the sun in some of the deeper areas, but you still need a rake to make it level, you know, after you've worked it in. 
Gotcha. Yep. Yep. That's a, that's a great point. And I, I to, to kind of piggyback on what Lee's saying, especially about mowing a little longer for top dressing, if you're dealing with any kind of a slope, you absolutely want to keep the grass a little bit longer. I've said this on other live streams, but the the grass also helps to hold that sand, that top dressing mix in place. If you if you cut it down too low, the little bit of rain you get, it's going to wash it out. It's going to ruin your top dressing job. So you really want to have a little bit of grass there to kind of help hold the, um, hold the sand, the top dressing mix in place. But great question, uh, Helmet. All right, so uh, he says, cringes the thought of you scalping with a, a, with a real mower for scalping. I, I agree, man, it's pretty rough. I mean, I use my true cut to scalp, um, but I have the greens master sitting there. The true cut is gonna go in afterwards. Uh, let's see, a uh, question for you about um, best riding real mower <laughs> to buy if you're, uh, let's see here, no. Uh, this one from Long, from uh, Launch Long, he says, what's the best riding real mower to buy if I, if I have a large budget? Riding real mower. Toro triplex, I guess. I mean, yeah, I mean it's one of the triplexes. John yeah. Deere, Toro. That's not my expertise. The greens, triplexes. I just not my area that I know a lot about. To be honest with you. Yeah, I mean, you're talking. I mean, th right. that's, those are really nice, but they're. I mean, they're expensive. But yeah, that's if you've got a big enough property. Because the thing is, something like that that big, you have to place to put it right. Because it's like a it's like a small tractor, so you need to have a, a place to put something like that. Um, yeah. So someone really likes because their grooved roller. Says I just received a groove roller for my H20. Wow. Uh, I guess they really liked it. And uh, let's see what other questions we have here. It says, can you um, can you scalp with a rotary mower easier uh, to get my H20 sharpened in the off season? Uh, yeah, I mean, I think depending on how low you're going, I mean, it's hard to get down super low with a rotary. I think much past an inch is gets, gets kind of tough. Um, you know, I, I would say if you're going under an inch, you're probably gonna have to use your real mower to get a good scalp and then just do your sharpening afterwards. Um, Lee, what are, you, what are your thoughts? You, I mean, going with a rotary to, to scalp? Yeah, you know, you think about it though, if, if you scalp, you scalp in the, obviously before the grass gets uh, going green, I know you don't want to, it's, it's tough to think about doing with your real mower. Mm -hmm. Number one, I had a buddy of mine tell me the other day, there really shouldn't be a significant difference, at least it isn't for us here in Georgia, between your scalping height and your cutting height. You know, it's really going to be an eighth of an inch, a quarter of an inch. It shouldn't be, hey, I'm taking it from two inches down to a half inch. Right. You know, if you're real mowing in the previous seasons, you shouldn't be that far off. Um, I know the rule is you shouldn't really cut really short over a cold winter. It could freeze the roots and kill the grass. I, at least I can speak from my experience. Um, I maintain mine at a half inch. Uh, cold winter, summertime, doesn't matter. Because um, when I finish real mowing, I'm still at a half inch going into the winter and it stops growing. The benefit of using the reel is significant, but the nice thing about the timing of it is generally when you scalp, you've got three to four weeks till the grass actually grows. It comes out of dormancy to need to be cut again. So you bought a little bit of time and it's probably a really good window, mm -hmm. even when the reel mower shops are busy to get that reel back in there and be sharpened. Makes sense. Great. Yeah. Great question. So, so yeah. And, and, and I agree with that because I, there, there was um, at least again, to qualify that in Georgia, in our climate, um, yeah. I have not, when, when wintertime rolls around or fall rolls around, I have not raised my height of cut up. I've just not done that with Bermuda and I, and I have not had any issues with it. I'm not saying that you can't have problems, but with my turf, I've never had a problem um, with it. The only reason why with me this time when I'm scalping and having to take a lot more material out is this past season, because I topped this a little bit later, I raised the height of cut to three quarters of an inch, and I'm this year I want to maintain it half an inch. So I am going to have a lot more material to take out. But like like Lee's saying, traditionally you really shouldn't have to remove that much material, at least in Georgia. If you live, you know, whatever Virginia or somewhere further up north, um, probably not using warm season grass. Then, but you know, it, my point is that um, in if in warmer climates, it's not strictly necessary to to seriously um, allow the, the the turf to kind of get out of out of hand over the winter months. In my in my opinion. Um, so, question, so question for you about the D Thatcher, uh, Lee. LG says, do the tines in the D Thatcher cartridge ever have to be replaced? If so, is it an easy or difficult process? Super easy. Very rarely do they need to be replaced. I've had mine for three years and I think one time um, just didn't spring back. Uh, it takes two seconds. They cost $2. And like I said, I think it has, let's just say it has 40. I don't know how many it has. One out of the 40 has gone bad in, in three years for me. Um, and I use my D Thatcher three or four times a year, not just to dethatch. I was just looking at my yard the other day and I was like, man, over the winter, we have mulch beds everywhere. That mulch starts to migrate into my grass. Sure. So I have all this black mulch on top of my brown dormant grass. I'm itching to get out there and run the dethatcher just to pick up all that mulch and dig it up out of my grass versus using a rake. It's so easy. Sure. So yeah, not, Great question. not worried on that scarifier at all. It's super easy. 
Very, very cool. Um, so when someone comes into your shop, they say, hey, I wanna buy a real mower. How do you select the size of the reel? A bear, it's a good question. How do you select the reel size as far as width of cut? Lawn size or like, what do you, how do you tell people to work that out? Uh, you know, usually it's lawn size. You know, if someone has a, I guess I would hope that they would tell me if they have a patch of grass that's only 20 inches wide, you know, going around the side of the house, that would probably be a qualifier. I hope they realize, um, but it's usually lawn size, you know, I have 12,000 square feet of my house and I had, like I said, the True Cut 27, 22 inch Swordman I use now. Um, I would guess I'd like to mow anywhere in the 45 minute to an hour, hour and 15 minute range would probably be my cap. So I think I'd base it off the time it takes. You know, a regular rotary mower is about 21 or 22 inches. So you can kind right. of use that as your gauge. Sure. Are you spending a ton of time and you want to go faster or is it a good amount of time that you're spending out there and you can go less? You know, I think I'd use that as my gauge, a rotary. Gotcha. Yeah, that's a great question. So 20, 20 inch, 20 inch that, that's a good sweet spot uh, thereabouts. Makes, that makes sense. That's a, that's a, good, that's a good way of, of looking at it. Um, so yeah, it looks like Brian will be reaching out to you. He says, hey, Lee, when I contact you, um, that it, he says, I will contact you. The answer you gave me was that it can be run at just half power. I love my sword one. However, I have some concern about that from day one. Would love for you to help me. So I'm sure just reach out to them cool. and they will um, they'll help you out. Absolutely. Please. Yep. So, so any questions on expansion to other states for real rollers? You know, that's a, actually, that's a really great question. Um, someone asked me earlier about the, uh, the Alette, uh, and it kind of ties into that. And that's, here's why. One of my concerns was you, when you have a company that's providing product from overseas, mm -hmm. can you get the, the parts? Can you get the, can you get the accessories? Can you get everything easily? Um, nowadays with shipping being three to four days anywhere in the country, um, one of my greatest concerns was not being able to house and have all of the parts for the entire area housed under one, one place. Sure. So when you start to expand into different states and different areas, all of a sudden the inventory levels have to shift and change. Um, and I think what was important to me too was, can this be done when I, out of one location? It saves sales tax for everybody that doesn't live in Georgia. So there's a huge benefit. Um, you know, out-of-state sales tax goes away. Uh, the other thing is I can really maintain and manage a large warehouse of lots of parts. And I can gauge it very easily because it's coming and going out of one facility. Gotcha. Um, wouldn't be as big of a deal if we had somebody on this side of the, of the big pond where I can just call up and get a part sent. But we really have to plan ahead. And we're really diligent about getting that stuff because it takes 60, 90 days. Um, when you think about it from ordering to container shipment to getting it here. So we're really big on having it all in one location for now. Awesome. Awesome. And, and a question, another question, this is not about uh, other parts of the States, but other countries. So neutral guy RSA from, uh, looks like uh, South Africa says I had a real time reaching uh, the Swarman's office and dealers worldwide. No one really seems interested. I, I don't know what, what you can do about South Africa. Uh, leave any, any ideas or, or thoughts? It's tough. I mean, it's a growing company. It's a new company. It's really tough to go boom and go worldwide. Um, they're really working fast and hard. Uh, sorry, it's, you know, it's, it's tough because if you sell a mower in South Africa, then you have to support the mower in South Africa. And that's probably the bigger challenge. Uh, we can ship a mower anywhere in the world. Um, the question is, to the question earlier, do you need a scarifier tong for $2 and I have to ship it to South Africa? That's, you know, yeah, the so logistics more than anything of the service and the support than it is getting you one mower just to be completely honest. And it may take time, but great sure. question. Sure. Great. Great. Chad Whitmar says, uh, so glad to see you doing this interview. I'm so glad to be doing it. I'm really glad that Lee came on. It's, uh, you know, awesome. Thank asking you tons of questions. Yes. Yeah. Cause you're right. We did speak about this in the chat. I think in, in one of the, the answers to one of my um, videos last year, you did mention it. So awesome. So Roger Sylvester says a question. He says, um, teach me how to properly backlap. Uh, C27 is kind of a pain. Thanks again for the live chat as well as all the great info. So I will tell you, Roger, I have never backlapped my C27, not once. Not I've never I've never done it. Um, uh, reason being, uh, I've it's just I've just I've never really had had to. Like I mean, I literally I've, I've taken it in the start of the season. It's sharp, and I just run it throughout the, throughout the entire season. And towards the end of the season, it's probably getting a little bit longer too. They probably should have taken it in to get it sharpened, but I just haven't I just haven't done that. Um, uh, so I, I actually can't tell you how to do it. I'm sure there's other videos out there, but Lee, I mean, I'm not sure if there's any content you guys have on backlap and a C27 or do you do yours very often or? Oh, you know, on our, my, when I had my true cut 27 was running it all the time. I took mm -hmm. it to a shop and they did it for me. I'll be completely honest. Um, it was one of the hassles, but it was one of the nice things too. 
it wasn't something I had to worry about because we have somebody five minutes away that does that for a living. And I was left it to the experts when I was doing that. But YouTube videos would be, man, they can help you solve any problem. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Yeah, YouTube, some, someone solved recommend. it. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, or, or check it to somebody. That's that's what I would do with mine. Um, so around the, uh, Pat Pat is um, chiming in to say to defend the Briggs. He says, I don't see why there's such a huge concern about Briggs and Stratton engines. They've been around forever. I use them on for like, for years. Yep, that's that's true. I mean, they've they've been around for um, for a long time. So Lee, a question from SMK. He says, Lee, do you ever plan on selling other equipment like scarifiers, Billy Goat type um, homeowner aerators? Any plans on expanding the Real Rollers product line? Um, I can't say never, but I I really love what I'm doing right now. I really my guys, Andrew, Eric. Um, it, it's a passion. It's not the business. You know, the passion came way before the business, and we're still. Loving real mowing, loving the products that we support and loving the passionate customers talk to. I don't know if those all exist in the other worlds. I just don't. I'm really happy where we are. And I also want to stay in something that I know a lot about. I'm not out just to make a buck. Like I said, it started with the passion and we're happy where we are. We love what Swordman's doing, what True Cut's doing, what McLean and Trimmer and these customers are doing. We're just having fun. I got to be honest. It's We're lucky. Yep. Yep. Awesome. And, and LG, uh, we take care of our super chat here. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it, sir. Super chat received. He says, thanks for putting this together, getting my Swordman questions answered. I am glad, sir. And then another grown man grass saying, super chat received. thanks for the question form. I'll be sending you lots of questions, Ron. We'll also be taking Lee up on that Friday night hangout offer. There you go, Lee. You can have people hanging out. Please do. <laughs> yep. Yep. And again, if anyone that needs to email me or has, has questions, again, if you get like sold test results, you're looking for some, some input, some, my opinion on how I would go about, you know, working, on your lawn or, or approving things, feel free to use my email, ron at golfcourselon.com. Feel free to email me there. I, uh, I I always try and do my best to help out as as much as I can. So I really I really appreciate you guys reaching out and um, and trust me with a little bit of your time. Thank you guys for watching, man. This is this has been a ton of fun. I've been I've been learning a lot, so it's also been uh, it's been really good. You know, uh, I've learned a lot too, Ron. Like I'm not sure if people are aware, but every time you think when you look, I, I have new respect for you on these YouTubes because I keep thinking my head's going left. But it's opposite in the camera. Yeah. So if you guys see me looking off screen, it's trying to figure out which way to turn my head because I'm trying to read the comments, but also not lose focus of you. So this is not easy. I gotta be honest. It's a little different when you see yourself on there. No, it's it's hard because it's it's your to your point, you're answering questions, you are trying to make eye contact. We're also like panning for the next question, and it's just believe it or not, when there's someone else on there to talk, it makes it like way easier. Like when it's just me here <laughs> by myself, it's like you know answer the question while I'm multitasking. So it's uh, I appreciate the interview. It's a skill. Yeah. I'm not, Definitely I'm helps out. It. it helps out. So Frederick Jukes always says, my wife always asks why it takes so long to mow the lawn. I tell her uh, about three to four neighbors uh, <laughs> to stop talking about the lawn, the real mower. You guys are the best. Awesome. 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 Absolutely. Yep. So point here from Kent Carson again. He says, in reference to riding real mower, just stay clear of Jenkinson's becoming harder and harder to get part to service for. Yeah, interesting. Yeah, I, I, it's funny. I've, that's one real mower I've not ever seen in person. I've never seen a Jacobson. I've looked at some of the videos of them online. They look really well built. They look like a really nice mower. I've just never seen one in person. I'm not sure if it's just a, um, if it's just a cost thing or, uh, you know, what, 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 the, what the deal is with that. Uh, let's see what other, what other um, points we have here. This is, Let's see. <laughs> Sorry, I know Kent. I knew that name, and all of a sudden it just dawned on me. I know exactly who Kent is. Oh, you know who Kent is? Yeah. Kent. Yeah, yeah. Yes, I know exactly. He's, he's a great guy. He's local around this area. So. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah, awesome. Really cool. And around the house with Pat says, I have an antique tractor from the early 60s with core engines. They run great. Uh, for an engine you don't see anymore, same for Briggs. Briggs are fine. See, so we a lot of people come into the Briggs defense, man. You guys need to stop <laughs> talking about Briggs. I mean, you did me wrong. The Honda GX is an awesome engine to, to date, right? And it's it's it's, um, it's so true for my for my true cut. The only time that engine is not started on the first pull is when I forget to turn the ignition on. Literally, yeah. like I'll go all season. It's gonna sit in the garage, and then I'll just flip, choke, start, and it's on. My even my Greens Master can't say that. Even the the Toro, which is like the the Cadillac mower, that Kawasaki engine is not as good. As, I'm sorry, the Subaru engine is not as good as the. Um, the the that Honda engine, so they, they build a really really good engine. They're loud, but they're uh, but they're really good. Uh, let's see here. So neutral RSA guy says, uh, uh, thank you, Ron. I really love your channel. Your chats very professional presentation style. Um, you know, it's funny. Like my better half always says that I you know I, sometimes I I can't shut up a lot of times. So you know I guess that that that's that's a good skill for YouTube videos and live thank streams, you. right? Yep, and a special thank you to you, Lee. He says, thank you for taking the time to explain logistics around international distribution and support in other 
countries. Awesome, 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 awesome. And then a super chat here from Josh super Habib. Received. He says, uh, "Great uh, live stream, Ron. Thanks for the good for the good uh, questions, I guess, or the good um, the good info." And this is awesome, guys. I and you know what? I think we are all talked out. I think we're out of questions. I think there's nothing else for us to um, for us to cover. I mean, Lee, we covered um, mowers. You talked about the different drive systems. Covered back lapping. Is there anything else? Anything else about real mowers that should, that, that, that should, people should know that you think we should cover or talk about? I, I mean, we covered a, a lot of stuff. Um, some yeah. of the questions folks will ask. I only think of one thing, but more importantly, I'm trying to keep up with this chat. I mean, it's really cool to see these questions. I mean, such yeah. a good group. I'm glad to be on it. It's kind of fun to be out here and talk to people that have the same passions. Um, but it's the only thing I could think of that questions that we get often, it's kind of what I'm relating to, is, you know, how to decide what, what height of cut I'm going to go with. And mm -hmm. what we tell most folks is, you know, set it three quarters of an inch. I'm specifically talking about a real mower. Mow your yard. And if you don't hit dirt that first time, drop it down an eighth an inch. Just keep dropping it down until you hit dirt somewhere on that property. And then you know that is the lowest you can go because every yard is unique. I can't just say to everybody, half inch is where you need to be cutting. It really depends on your particular yard. So although you don't want to put the reel in the dirt, it's the only way to find out where you can cut it at. And what we recommend is if you hit dirt anywhere in your yard, raise it up a quarter of an inch and know that's your sweet spot. And that's really the only tip or question we get a lot of from customers that we haven't answered already. Picking the, picking the correct height of cut. Very cool. And most of your customers, do you find them are they're in the half inch range or three quarters inch, or is it? I guess it, it's probably a big spread. But I mean, if you had to guess, like, what any idea around like what height of cut most people are running their mowers at? You know, I think probably I would like to think half to an inch. You know, the okay. folks that are lower than a half probably are getting closer to that greens mower perspective, and they're mowing every two days. Um, it's a real big passion. You really got to be on it. Mm -hmm. um, we get a lot of questions of can I mow my yard at? You know, like you said earlier, you know one and three quarters with a real mower. You can, um, but you just don't get the benefit of real mowing. Mm -hmm. um, you kind of lose some of that luster of being able to cut it. So, you know, in my mind, I think half inch to one inch, one and a quarter at the very most is kind of the sweet spot for any real mower. You really get the benefit out of it there. Sure, sure. And I'll leave with you, with your groove roll. This is a good question here from LG. I think I've covered this one before in the past. It'd be good to get your take on it. It says, um, so when should someone use a narrow grooved roller as opposed to a wide grooved roller? Now we're starting to split That's hairs a really good here. Good question. Yeah. No, yeah. I, Any thoughts on that somebody one? Somebody called me the other day and was asking me about this. You know, we tested literally um, about 10 different designs of grooved roller uh, last year before we launched it. It's actually a bunch of my neighbors and buddies that did it with me. Um, I gave each of them a different grooved roller, depending on what real mower they had. And they kind of swapped and interchanged them. We tested weights materials, spacing, the depth of the groove. And what we found was the easy way out was to make, in my opinion, uh, a flat washer with a spacer, flat washer, spacer, very narrow, anything from a cost perspective and still get the grooved effect mm -hmm. um, type of grooved roller. The problem with that is real mowers without a grass catcher on the front are heavy. You imagine if you did use a grass catcher and you're putting all that weight on the front, we found that really narrow let's say washer type grooves uh, for the metal piece, they would sink into the yard too much if it was moist at all and really tear the yard up. You can't turn, you would have to run a straight line no matter what. So imagine trying to mow okay. around a flower bed that's curved, it just wasn't feasible. Right. Um, even if it was great for the soil and the turf, it just wasn't realistic for a homeowner um, or the application that we make these rollers for. So um, the spacing, what we found, we still need enough meat where you were going to be rolling on some type of soil so that if you did want to go around a curved uh, flower bed, you could still curve without digging in. Okay. But also, you know, with, like I said, with that washer theory, you don't want it sinking into the soil. Um, but with the spacing, we found it at three quarters of an inch uh, versus an inch versus very narrow. Uh, the benefit to be good where you can sink in, yet you're still able to go around contours of curves. Very so I don't cool. know the exact answer, but we did test a bunch of different ones. I got you. And the ones that you guys are selling now are the ones that you find is like probably a good blend, like a good balance between, um, you know, beating up the soil, getting, you know, breaking up that thatch layer and still also producing a better cut without, you know, being a nightmare. You got to gotta find that there's a give and take on each end. You got to go for the 80%. You know, it may not be the best for every single person, um, but we, uh, here's what I can tell you in all honesty, 100% honesty, in 12 months, we haven't had one cent back. And that's a pretty good number. Um, wow. I would have thought more, to be honest with you. You know, we were selling the groove roller for about 12 years. I mean, the smooth roller for about 12 years. 
And many of our customers are folks that had the smooth roller. And my big indicator of whether this was a success or not was did those customers call me back and say, man, this is no different than my smooth roller. I want a refund. And not one person did that. Well, maybe tonight somebody's going to do it <laughs> just to show me. But no, I'm being dead serious. Uh, so I know that it's definitely got benefits just based off customer feedback. Awesome. Awesome question. And I think you kind of answered this, but like, what's your favorite real mower? It's the Swerman right now. It's not just because we sell it. That's the reason we do sell it. It's because it's my favorite. Um, I just, I had so many reasons. I'll give you three because I didn't even talk about these. I love the enclosed grass catcher. You know, I've been used to an open grass catcher. I know you're not supposed to catch your grass, but I have two boys that play sports. One's 14 and one's 10. And the reality is I don't always have time every Saturday or during the week to mow and blow. And it's a shame to cut your grass to be so perfect. And you have a bunch of leaves and debris on it where you really can't appreciate it. So one sure. of the things I loved about the Swordman compared to my true cut, just my personal opinion, was having an enclosed grass catcher because it really did catch everything. And I have trees that shed leaves all year long. So I valued that. Um, the other two things I valued was a cartridge system. And I love the rear drum. The rear drum, it floats like a floor buffer. I mean, you're on top of the grass. And even if you're peeling out and kind of fishtailing around the flower beds, the front end is locked in with a grooved roller. And you can't even tell by looking at the yard that maybe you were kind of floating around those curves. It's like driving a sports car. Nice. Um, I don't even have one, but I can imagine. Nice. Nice. Very, very cool. That's good. Good answer. Good answer. Um, yep. So, uh, pod, uh, around house of past, this is the best podcast. I agree. This is, this is definitely one of the best one. Lee's an awesome guest and is, and is oh. just, and just, and just dropping that knowledge, man. So is, this is, this is good. And you guys questions. had a lot of, asked a lot of really good, tough questions, which is really, really good. This is a fun one for Maurice. He says, when mowing should you, um, cut using the same pattern all the time? I am not a fan of that. Um, Maurice, um, here's the thing with a greens mower, you can get away with it a little bit more without causing, I mean, causing issues. But really, you want to you want to vary the pattern um, a, a bit. You can, you know, sometimes people say you can mow um, lengthways and then mow more, more perpendicular. I think, believe it or not, the um, I was watching um, a video that US that USGA did. I'll have to find it and I'll have to post a link to it, maybe an announcement or something. And believe it or not, the 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 mowing pattern that produced the best color was not like mowing one way and then mowing perpendicular it was doing what they call it's like a backtrack method so like i mowed and it's kind of weird you mow down and then mow back on the same the same one you just went down on that same path so i mow down and back and then move over down and back and then move over so it doesn't just as far as the stripes it doesn't really produce as cool as cool as stripes but as far as color they i guess again people that are at universities that are um, agriculture universities like they test this kind of stuff and apparently like the, the and it was obvious in the video if you looked at it the color of the turf looked better using this method um, but the, the long short of it is yes, I would not always mow your lawn in the same direction. I would vary it, especially if you're using something like a true cut. You absolutely want to vary it like every time because you will, those, those, those two wheels that, that weight, because the way it's distributed will absolutely burn like ruts in your lawn. It just kind of looks unsightly with a greens mower, probably a little less, less required, but I would, I would vary it every, every time you mow, if you can either, um, use one of the four patterns. So this way, this way, and then diagonal and then diagonal. And then that's, that's, that's what I do with my lawn. And it, in the summertime, it produces a really cool look because when you walk, no matter what angle you're looking at, there's stripes. So it looks really, really cool and makes the neighbors think you're crazy too. So that's, that's, that's always fun. What about you, Lee? Do you mow the same patterns or you vary? What do you do? Um, honestly, I do it just cause I get bored. Uh, I'll just change it up one day. You know, I've been mowing one direction for a couple of weeks and it's like, you know what, let's just go this way. I, sure. I really don't have that much science to it. I truly enjoy just doing it. So I may trick myself. I try to go north and south because it makes the stripes pop better to the way the sun that. comes across. But it'll be random as can be. And one day I'm just going to shoot left. And I'll just start heading that direction. And just mow it that way for the day. I can see that. Probably the only, I should caveat that, the only part of my lawn that I mow pretty much the same way each time, but I will kind of offset the stripes, is the front lawn. Because I mow that slope diagonally, I make diagonal passes right. to prevent scalping. So on the front lawn, I mow fairly often the same pattern. Uh, the back lawn, I mix it up. I I, I, I do that all the time. Um, this is a good question. This is a, probably, probably going to be no, but we'll see. Um, so <laughs> would you sharpen an LED cartridge if someone sends you one? <laughs> uh, I just can't take the risk of it getting damaged in shipping. Because yeah. it becomes my fault to ship it back to you. I'm so sorry. Um, that's the biggest risk in, in these reels is making sure they don't get damaged. It's, it's your baby. I don't want that to happen. And I can, can't guarantee it with that mower. Because yep. I don't make the foam for it. Gotcha. Good question. So uh, Michael Herring says, uh, how's the Real Rollers turf part coming along? 
it's, 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 I mean, I, I can talk to it a little bit. I mean, it's, it's, it's looking good and there's gonna be some cool content. Like I was actually, um, I, I, I took uh, this morning off from work to actually go film some content there and we, uh, it'll be a cool video coming out. Um, I still have to edit and everything, but the goal is to get it out Monday that you guys will be able to check out. That will, that's going to be kind of cool. Kind of what Lee was talking about is like breaking up different turf types um, and doing different, pro applying different processes, different products to the same one. So stay tuned to the channel for uh, Monday morning when that's, that's going to go live. And if you're not a subscriber yet, that's a good reason to subscribe because you will be able to get notified whenever that happens. There's lo lots of, lots of cool stuff. Lee's not that far from me. Reroll's not that far from me. So it's going to be fun to, uh, to collaborate with them on other stuff. I mean, I I'll go out and film as often as they will have me. So very, very cool. Uh, Lee, uh, last, last few questions here we got to is like, what kind of grass is your lawn? Good question, Empire Zoysia. So Empire I, Zoysia. I call it the lazy man Zoysia. I didn't put it in um, when I bought the house. It was already in there. And I was fortunate the guy before me had a passion for his yard. Um, it was in pretty good shape. Uh, he used a rotary mower, but I uh, quickly turned to a reel. But yeah, I have Empire Zoysia. It's kind of a fat blade, grows really slow. Real disease resistant, um, shade tolerant, but I love it. I love it so much. I put some of it here at the turf park. To be honest with you. Yeah, yeah, it looks it looks cool. And then you have two zoysias and the the tiff tuff at the turf park. Yep. Very cool. Well, guys, I think that's all we have for tonight. Again, if you guys need to check out, if you're interested in a swordman or a true cut, be sure to check out uh, Lee and the team at realrollers.com. You know, they're, they're a great group of guys. Always love to talk about mowers. Will and will help you out. If you're interested in um, any like lawn care, um, so certain products, I don't have a ton up there as, as yet, but um, I did launch a new store, golfcourselawn.com. Right now you can get your soil test kits, uh, pre-emergent, a few other things, but there's definitely gonna be some more, more products coming here in the next few weeks. So definitely stay tuned for that. And then finally, shameless plug, um, as I continue to do course development, uh, if you go to golfcourselawn.com, that is where you can sign up to the mailing list to be notified whenever the course goes live. I'm waiting for a few things to shake out as far as um, I'm filming some of the content to get to the point where I'm happy that enough of it is done that we can I can pre-launch it. Um, but I'm still actively working on it, content still going into it. I think you guys are going to really like it for those of you that are interested in it. It's not going to be a fit for everyone, but for someone that wants something structured, I think it's going to be something very, very, very cool. Um, well, guys, again, thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, I, I, I really, really appreciate it. Lee, thank you so much for, for coming on and hanging out in the live stream. Thank you, guys. Yeah, if there's any questions that I missed um, or that we missed, you know, feel free to drop me an email here, ron at golfcourselawn.com, and um, I'll, I'll do my best to answer you guys. Um, and let's see, look what last question we have here before we, we sign off. John God says, hey, I like both you guys, both of your shirts on tonight. Any chance of you doing a giveaway tonight? Um, I didn't really... I, I didn't really... Know. Yeah, but we I wouldn't so, know we, how to do it to be fair. I didn't yeah, plan for it. Sorry. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll have to plan for something and do something at some point. So that that will happen not tonight, but it will we will we will plan for it. And again, guys, thank you so so much. Um have a great and amazing weekend. I know in most cases you're not gonna be able to mow, but get out there and do something in the lawn, maybe do a nice a nice little pre-scout, put down some pre-emergent, you know, whatever you can do to get your lawn ready for springtime. Thank you guys so much for watching. Have an amazing weekend. Until next time. <laughs>